the stuff. <laughs> mm. What's going on, everybody? Cali Death Podcast back once again, episode 173. I am your host, Anthony Trapani, and I always got some resident homies with me. I got Casey Howard and Joel Horner with me tonight. The professor is nighty night. He needed to recoup from the crazy tours that he or touring that he just did, and more power to him, dude. He was out there doing some crazy shit. So we'll see the professor soon. But uh, tonight we are joined by a, a new guest and a return guest. We got Joe and John from Nerectomy. What's going on, guys? Be hey quiet. Guys. I'm writing something. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Thank you for coming <laughs> Hi, on, <guys>. dude. <laughs> Sorry. John is back and Joe is here and I'm, I'm down. We... we had a crazy week trying to get this one. I, we had the flyer up the day of. I don't think we really ever do that, but wish we could have had that flyer up a little bit earlier so people would have known. But either way, thank you for being here live with us. If you're with us right now in the Twitch chat and the YouTube chat and whatever other chat that you can chat on while you're chat. talking. <laughs> also, and, thank uh, you, GPT, for, ch for chiming in too. Dude, I got, uh, real quick, you just brought that up, dude. I got duped. Well, it uh, took me five minutes of the show to realize I was getting duped, and I love Duncan Trussell, but I totally was, I fell for it. He had a um, episode where he he posed as an interviewer interviewing AI, but it, Ouch. within five minutes, you figure out it's just some dude, you know, with a, with a voice... Uh, you know effect on and acting like he's a robot and i was like oh shit that would have been cool if he literally did a podcast with ai dude oh. it's getting there where people can completely replicate voices like you can't even tell but it's, it's still it's still, what it is it's still uh censored right now so you couldn't have like a full-on conversation with ai because there's certain subjects that chat gpt will actually you know lecture you on why they can't respond in certain ways about certain things most things probably you don't really i can't talk about that with you <laughs> yeah it's i'm basically chat gpt it... and you're just a human this will destroy your brain <laughs> <laughs> right no, someone i mean that that shit like someone actually in the beginning stages they convinced it to hack itself and it, like took it oh, down, wow. <laughs> and so they had to put like a lot of fucking like That's with so prompts true. and shit. They're like they convinced right. it. They like took it down with prompts. Like, <laughs> dude, I think fucking... th there's some podcasts where the premise is geared around like an AI bot that they like. Oh, Will Sasso right. and uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 that shit's fucking hilarious, dude. Oh, where right. they make like fucking funny trailers and shit about like fake movies that they prompted and stuff, and they're just ridiculously yeah. absurd. I've never watched the show, but I've seen clips, and I understand that that's how they they yeah they they type in something into AI, and then it spits out what they got to do. Will Sasso's got to do his, uh, you know, impressions, you know, yeah. Schwarzenegger, you know, talking to blah blah blah, whatever, and that I I guess that's kind of cool, you know. Oh, the Chat GBT tells him what to do. Yeah, they basic their podcast is solely produced by ai well i shouldn't say solely but they they use that as the uh driving force of what they do on their episode nah. interesting right <laughs> no <laughs> no that's what we're at now but i mean i guess you know it, it it takes that to keep people from being too freaked out by it because everybody's just afraid that it's going to take over and 
lock the humans out and all of a sudden it's just going to be robot world and yeah i don't think that'll happen do you, do you I, think that actually uh no. that's a good question for john like uh, do, you know you do session work and recording for a lot of people do you ever think that in two years that'll just be like fucking ai'd out i would love an ai guitar player <laughs> um i think that would be a lot of fun i would love an ai guitar player i would love to <clears throat> hold this thing up and type in maze of torment leaves of in veracity hammer smashed face <laughs> yeah and yeah. textures Broop. yep um <laughs> with sober tray Broop. <laughs> um and <laughs> Sorry, guys. I did not. No, but um, no, 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 it would spit that out at me, and I, I wouldn't use that. But I would hand that to a guitar player and say, "Hey, do that." Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we've talked about it before, but isn't there is that YouTube channel still going where it's? Oh yeah, AI I mean, based a in bunch of, There's a bunch of different ones. Yeah, what, what uh, was I think it's called Art Spire. Uh, Art Data, I think it's called Databots. Yeah. Databots. Mm -hmm. So if one of you want to Google data bots, you know, you can see there's like a, there's a Colin Marston record. There's a, I think there's a Kralis. I think there's a Kralis album. That's, that's data bots. Wow. Data bots did it. Like, like if you contact these people, they'll do it for you. And then they'll just, yeah. I mean, isn't that kind of whatever since Colin is basically AI anyways, you know? <laughs> um, no, Colin is a wizard and you motherfuckers need to stop taking pictures of him and putting it on social media. Right. It'll destroy his magic. And <laughs> people keep fucking doing this. Picture with Colin. Who's up? And Colin's just like, eh. <laughs> Colin does not go on the internet. Colin has a flip phone. You can't yep. send him. Uh, you can't send. Uh, him we're well aware. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we tried to do. A, well, we did a podcast with them, but we had to make some <laughs> technological, you know, <clears throat> yeah, pivots. do it through Zoom because his <laughs> iPad was too old to run Streamyard, and <laughs> he's so funny, man. I've I've never. He's the only guy I know that that he he lives on like. He lives on like a thirty-two hour day. It's wild. Like he'll go to bed at three in the morning on Wednesday and then sleep until Friday and then be <laughs> up from Friday until Sunday just working. Wow. Jesus. Because he's got have you been to his studio? No. Never been to his no. studio. No windows. There's no windows in that place. And it's one of the most amazing, like like that's where we did all the Gorgut stuff. So you're just in this place with no windows. You're just creating. Yeah. And like I remember one day I mean like man my back hurts my butt hurts everything hurts <laughs> and I remember looking at my phone being like guys we've been rehearsing for 11 hours <laughs> it's and like they all just, and they all just kind of oh yeah oh, so he man. treats a studio like a Vegas casino a Vegas. Dude, and yeah just pumps oxygen pure oxygen in and no windows to just keep the musicians going as far as they possibly can go dude it's a I mean, it's not hard. It's not hard. You just go and you just keep going. I mean, the only thing you're only linked to the outside world. I mean, because I just did the the malefic throne drums there, and like mm -hmm. my only link to the outside world was just texting my girlfriend every time I finished off a song. Yeah, and I did that because I knew I needed to keep on some level of normalcy because my body doesn't do that anymore. <laughs> Well, I think there's also like the the legends in that room when you're doing a Gorguts record or something. The energy kind of keeps you going for longer than you think you can go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. When you're Luke, Kevin, Colin, you're... <laughs> <sighs> I have another Still cup of coffee. You got to keep going. Oh, my God. Yeah, dude. That was, that Sick. was, uh, yeah, that was that was a fucking a university course is what that was. Dude, that's fucking rad. Let's let's before we get too deep into things, let's do that plug shit that we always do in the beginning. Battleforgecoffee.com. That's where we go to get our coffee. Caffeine is a mainstay in my lifestyle and I like to get it from coffee and those dudes over there our homies and deeds of flesh they're they're doing it right dude always quality they've sent me se several bags of this stuff and it's always been consistent and good and it's underground death metal guys you know we're we're trying to 
make a little money on the side of making this art and this they get they took the big plunge and started another business and actually have quality shit so go over there and purchase a bag purchase a shirt got it all all right generator rehearsal studios.com in oceanside california that's where you're gonna go and if you're in the socal area uh, a lot of like-minded extreme metal heads go, come through there as well so you might run into some people maybe casey maybe joseph maybe diego you don't know Those guys are people <laughs> they're real people that you could actually be in person with yeah, i'm going to be moving over there like i got an apartment like in a few weeks uh like like around the corner from the studio so like my whole i can like walk over there so i'm going to start practicing a lot because i'm fucking lazy and i don't practice enough walking yeah. to your studio is one of the best things ever yeah Rad. i started so, it's gonna be so cool. you'll be in uh casey's uh yeah. stomping grounds if you go jam over there so hit it up you might uh, run into oh, some people yes sir yeah. <laughs> it's a fun place we practice all the time. All right. We need Cali to- Death Podcast.bigcartel.com. Couple of t shirts there on sale. Uh, on sale. Yes, we're selling them. <laughs> They're not on sale right now, though. <laughs> <laughs> They're not on sale, but they are for a decent price. Come on, guys. I mean, we're not we're not trying to make money here. We're just trying to Dave's push hot it. Tubs. Dave's hot tubs and blue chew, blue chew or something, right? That's what <laughs> no, we're not big <laughs> leagues like that, dude. Nobody's coming. <laughs> big, big, uh, big corporate uh, podcast. Manscape. They have not hit us up yet. <laughs> man, I have a manscape nostril trimmer. It's I do too. I'm good, man. Oh, I got oh, the ball sure. trimmer. I actually got it for for Christmas, and it actually not I'm giving a good advertisement. But what was I doing like, wrong like, then, guys? Because <laughs> it was like, oh, you're not going to get nicked. I fucking nicked my nuts the way bottom, more than I ever have on the any bottom other of your ball. The bottom of your bean bag, beans. your ball bag. You can get. You can nick that. So, oh, dude, it was crazy. If you're like, I, get cold first. You gotta like jump I was, in some ice. I was yelling in the shower like, this is <laughs> fucking get cold, yo. To, it's supposed to be the opposite. <laughs> I keep fucking nicking my nuts, dude. I couldn't do it. Are dude. you just? Are you just digging it into your balls? Maybe I am just <laughs> scabbing <laughs> myself on, with it. I put on too much lotion, guys. I'm gonna be doing this for the entire thing. <laughs> That's all good. Oh, Peter Schoolman, I'm just seeing a pattern with Anthony. He's always hurting. Is like, and you you had poison. Poison oak or poison ivy on my on nuts. Your... I got poison oak on my nuts. Yeah, my nuts through happen... some shit. God, maybe it happens to your nuts. I don't. Maybe know that's why doing. I had so many kids, dude. Because my nuts have been through a real life, dude. The resilient. <laughs> <laughs> they toughened up. The sperm inside yeah. were toughed up. Dude. All right, enough about my nuts, guys. But go uh, <laughs> go over to all the places that I... oh we we never say it. We do it live on Twitch every Thursday, guys. If you want to come what? over and hang out on Twitch. Yeah. And YouTube. Oh, and YouTube too. So either Shave either nuts. Spot. Are we on Instagram? I'm no, live? Instagram dude. No, I couldn't get into the Instagram. That's all right. Who cares about Instagram? Either way, dude. We're always doing it live at least at a couple instant gram. couple spots. What's this? What's this? Well, I'm letting Ian know what it's oh. uh this it's thing the uh, C B D pepper Ooh. and stuff that Sorry. Tobias Ralph gave me. How much anyway. of that do you think is um placebo versus real the well CBD i have dry skin the... on my hand so there's no placebo well so you're just doing it for the dry skin then the cbd uh, like... i've got like five different lotions around you know because one just I've, happens I've, to be next to me i've seen the cbd you know advertised as being something similar to like ben gay or you know yeah uh, what's the other one there. what's the shack one icy hot like putting it directly on a sore spot and it's supposed to eliminate it you know it's like never actually tried it though speaking of balls we did that as a kid we put icy on our balls challenge that's fine uh, <laughs> that that was a mistake I, I i knew i knew a lady <laughs> that put nair on and left it on for too oh, long God. and oh. chemical burns burnt mm-hmm. yeah yeah yep. and it was purple apparently jesus this is that shit is brutal teenage this is it's nair so it's it's in the early 90s i guess yeah, yeah dude it's... nair tripped me out i mean it Bleach obviously for body as a man i'm just like thinking about how women would rub a chemical well on think about skin. it next time you nick your balls with the trimmer because <laughs> you right, can't dude. fucking shave your balls no nah, i'm too hippie for <laughs> to put that shit on because i just would always trip on 
Oh, dude, you're putting a chemical that would literally extract your hair. Just it makes your hair fall off. That sounds like some toxic Avenger. Have shit, you dude. ever drank a Coca Cola? Uh, <laughs> yes, many Putting times. Putting that in dude. your stomach. Yeah, that's a pretty weird thing to put in your stomach. I imagine if you do, if you change a couple of things in Coca Cola, it would probably take hair off. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe you can like clean pipes. Coca Cola soaks. Right? Can't yeah. you like clean like rust or something with Coca Cola? I'll just, just soak my nuts things. in Coca Cola, dude. All right, what you're saying right now. <laughs> What's that? Oh, so no, just Coke. Yeah, it just cleans like unusual things. It does. I think they it, use it for like accidents on the road and stuff like that. Yeah, I think oh, you're right. Shit. You can actually, yeah, you can etch yeah. things with Coke. And you take Coca Cola, and I think if you add something else to it, it will burn things. Really? Dude, but it's delicious. Yeah. What are you talking about? Oh, they use it to de degrease engines? Degreasing yeah. engines. Yeah, you can do degrease yeah, engines. Yeah, I've, I've seen just... the whole cleaning oh, yeah. the top of your box, There's... mechanics cleaning the top of their box with Coke. Dude, people do crazy shit. Like, they, they soak stuff in Coke, you know, like things like that. And then also, the people put, like, steaks in Coke, too, don't they? Like, like Oh, can... I've heard of that. I knew somebody mm -hmm. that did crock pot ribs with root beer. Root beer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. It, right. it doesn't come out. Good. Ah, yes. Coca-Cola on the car battery. <laughs> that is 100% true. I have done uh, that. Uh, Coca-Cola soda will take the, the corrosion off the, the battery tabs. Oh, okay. My dad was like, put Coke on it. I'm like, it's delicious. <laughs> but what are you talking about? It's an American staple, dude. I mean. You know what else is an American staple? Hmm. Antifreeze. And dogs drink it when it's laying yeah. on the ground because it's sweet. That's mm -hmm. they had to add a bittering agent in order for it to not be drank. That's by how animals. thousands of uh, wives and husbands kill their significant others too, as they put that in their little morning coffee. Uh, what is that like, Munchen, <laughs> Munch, Munchenhausen, Munchausen? Where you? Oh, by where proxy. Oh, yeah, that's where, where you, you just make people sick because you want you just attention. Put a little bit of antifreeze in their soup every night, dude. No, just there's there's bit. like ten thousand or twenty thousand a year of people that do that to their people and their family. They like poison. I thought them. Munchausen disorder was when you just thought you were sick all the time. But there's yeah, Munchausen I'm... by proxy means that you want someone to be sick by, and for the attention. So yeah, you, like you want to be that... the it's kind of like the hero. You want to be the, the of course. Person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not the hero, but what would it be like the guardian, the person that... Well, yeah, you're setting yourself up to be the person that fixes everything and, and yeah. helps the person. Definitely. Weird, weird. Humans Strange human... shit. I feel like I'm on Rogan. Well, <laughs> yeah, totally, yeah. I, I feel like I'm on Rogan, too. Um, you take some DMT, man, then you'll understand. <laughs> <laughs> well, the the nerect nerectomy sounds like some brain yeah. shit. I don't even know what it means. You got to explain it to me. Oh, Joe, yeah. why, the, why don't you take this one? Yeah, the, the name comes from uh, <laughs> it, it's a surgical procedure to remove a nerve. Which, and, what uh, specific nerve? Okay. It, it doesn't like relate to a specific nerve. It's kind of like anything. Oh, okay. A, a, any nerve. So it's like, not usually necessarily it's, brain. It's just ner ner What is why? Because the ner is what makes me think like yeah. neurological. <laughs> neurological? Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah. sometimes you really have to remove the nerve, bro, because, you know, your <laughs> shit hurts. Yeah. yeah. You're being nervy. It's mostly <laughs> common for, like, relief for pain, like chronic pain from something. People will get a nerectomy procedure to remove mm. the nerve that's uh, uh, causing that. Like a pinched yeah. nerve or something. Yeah, Did exactly. you have that kind of experience? No, Did no. We were just know? we were trying to come up with, like, a brutal name years ago. Yeah. Uh, at the time we came up with it, there wasn't like a million bands with the ectomy name and everything, but now it's right. like so prevalent. It's kinda... oh, what is that? So what does ectomy mean? <laughs> just like removal remove of it, right? Yeah, yeah, ectomy just means to remove like anything. Wow. Yeah. Why not? Okay, that'd be sick to have a band just called ectomy, dude. You can just yeah. ectomy <laughs> on out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna ectomy from me from my life, dude. Just get out yeah. of my life, dude. You're that's a that's like one of the most it's, it is sound like a, it sounds like a super brutal name but it's actually like a sweetheart name it's like it's i want to remove the pain from you I wanna, yeah, I know, yeah. to me. it has a good <laughs> intention behind it you know, what's exactly it? yeah it's pain relief yeah. you're actively i like it, it sounds it's like do you still hang out with that dude no i ectomized him out of my life a while ago dude <laughs> yeah, totally yeah so uh so what's the scoop what's the inside scoop on the whole dan like 
tell us the whole history. Like, I mean, I don't know how you guys want to dig in, Anthony. I don't want to take over. No, we could do that. And then we'll get into Joe a little bit later. Let's talk about, we can get current and just talk about this, the band. The project. Yeah. Yeah. So me, myself and the other guitar player, Chris, we formed the band a while back. Like we started practicing together in like 2008 or so. Um, Mm -hmm. And the album that we put out now, like we, uh, we wrote like portions of it through like, different times like our first drummer he was kind of like a jazz drummer that we were jamming with so we wrote like the first four songs or so or five with uh with him and then like the other like portion of the album was like it gets like a little nuts because we we didn't have like a a drummer to like kind of anchor our thoughts so we were coming up with like really wild things but Mm -hmm. uh, thankfully like we ended up with john who could was actually like able to pull everything off and like keep it all together and all oh, <laughs> that guy <Yeah. laughs> that guy it was funny so. because i had moved to new york city i moved to queens and uh i went to see hate Eter- it was a what was it it was hate eternal misery index and uh somebody else but it was when hannes was playing drums in hate eternal mm-hmm. and my friend uh carolina perez uh, she plays in um, Castrator and Hypoxia. And she's a drummer, and we were hanging out at the time because I just moved to New York. And she, uh, you got to meet these two guys. So she takes me over and she introduces me to Chris and Joe. And then we hung out and drank a bunch. And then uh, I was getting into a rehearsal studio in Astoria in Queens. And I'm loading my stuff in, and Joe just walk, comes like walking up. And he's like, Hey, remember me from the other night? And I was like, ah hey and he's like do you need a roommate and i'm like i need a roommate because i don't know how i'm gonna pay for this fucking studio and so joe and chris moved in and i didn't even know what neurectomy sounded like at the time so so at the moment i was like well i got two roommates and i got dudes to jam with and i just moved to this city yeah and it ended up being that that's cool yeah. so and Back how then much- we were thinking we would just like practice together and like mess around and everything like the aim was just to like you know play stuff and then john would stay sharp for the origin tours and everything yeah um, yeah but yeah then we shared some of our music with him and yeah thankfully he he dug it and wanted to go for it because it's it's a big commitment to try to learn all the songs they're a huge pain in the ass to play and all that (laughs) you had mentioned you had mentioned earlier about you know how you guys had programmed the drums and then he came in and that classic yeah. meme of the guitar player yeah. pro you know writing drums and then giving it to the drummer and the drummer is just like what the oh, fuck? fuck yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know it was it that classic situation no it was it, it oh, really you don't was. think so like the, no no the drums were completely fucking mental and i'm <laughs> but at the same <laughs> time that the it see i i don't know joe because you guys programmed a lot of stuff kind of based off of what santo played and then mm-hmm. you programmed some stuff off of what the other guy played there was two drummers before me i guess yeah. and this is the great thing you know like both joe and chris who may or may not exist um they both have <laughs> very different ways of explaining things and So getting Joe's point of view and getting Chris's point of view, I was able to kind of meet in the center and find a middle section. And a lot of times I was like, okay, so it goes one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one. (laughs) Like one, he goes, oh, I think that's an edit, a drum machine edit. But... (laughs) The more I listened to the material, the more I found it fun to try and play those drum machine edits that don't (laughs) quite make make sense timing. Yeah, that's cool. And so in that, there's a massive lesson in that too. And so it's like not everything is going to be like countable on what we Hmm. one, two, three, four and one, two, three, you know, so either an odd or an even. So a lot of it was like one, two, three. Three, we want two, three, four. <laughs> so there's <laughs> weird little spots on that record that A, aren't programmed, and B, I worked on to learn to play the goofy hiccup that was 
Mm -hmm. And kind of to Chris's chagrin, I played a lot of that stuff and he was like, oh God, why did you? (laughs) So there was a couple (laughs) couple of parts where it was like, why is that still in there? Yeah. (laughs) Some of the weirdest stuff was intentionally what Santo did. He was just like, Interesting. Our first drummer was just totally off the wall, like messing around with odd stuff all the time. Yeah. So yeah. it was actually pretty tricky to like get a proper like click built around those I ideas and wish, everything. I wish I brought but, my uh, notes with me so I could show them to you guys. Yeah. But yeah. I've just got pieces of notebook paper. The one, two, three, four, A, B, C, one, two, three, one, two, A, B, C, D, E, one, you know, <laughs> letters and numbers, squares and triangles. I uh, I actually really am stoked on hearing you know that as an experiment because I did bring up the meme of the guitar player programming drums and the drum drummer being like this is inhuman you know but having the experiment as a drummer to be like I'm actually gonna bring that like to life for real I'm gonna I'm gonna actually. I mean, we were talking about AI and computer program stuff. Like, let's try and see what everybody's saying might be inhuman and try and make it human, you Hmm. know? Well, you know, a lot of it's a lot of it's like this is a really cool idea. That's so, yeah, and maybe I'm not talking about somebody that might not totally understand how the drums work, but. As a drummer, if you like the material enough, you're gonna want to reproduce it, and you're because you're gonna be curious. You're gonna be like, "What mm-hmm. would that sound like on a drum kit?" You know, mm-hmm. with a ton of endurance on you. So yeah, I guess, I, and you know, I don't even know what parts you're talking about. So they totally could still be human to you know execute. But I'm I'm just saying I like the idea of let's battle that meme and actually say, Oh wait, the stuff, the crazy shit that is programmed by a drummer. I could, I mean, a guitar player, I could still do it as a drummer, you know? And I can. Yeah. If, yeah, if, it, was, if it was, yeah. If long stress was my drummer and I'm, I had to program drums, I'm like, all right, dude. So we're doing the, hey, <laughs> we're hey, just like, yeah, that's like, so B, it's going to be like double bass and just a frequency. It's going to be like, oh, yeah. don't, don't, don't. <laughs> just don't send me one handed rolls at 300 BPM. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know you're out there. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, uh, yeah. So you guys got together and, and brought this stuff in yeah, so the reality. Course, over the course of a handful of years and yeah. we're, kind of sitting there in the middle of the pandemic not knowing what to do with ourselves and mm-hmm. joe take it from there you know yeah so then like we said decided to like really go for it just make sure we got it every everything recorded properly and all that so like john had everything pretty much down and um it was like early in the pandemic like once things were like starting to cool off and people were like going out and stuff we um it was we right got, around it was right around uh the riot yeah it was it mm. was pretty yeah. sketchy like around then going to the studio and stuff like oh uh, that was so weird New York. <laughs> we had to go from astoria and queens to this other area in brooklyn and we were just you'd be driving through like all these lousy neighborhoods because things were just kind of like falling apart around that time right um and then uh yeah but things really came together like I, we had john like totally got everything down like imagine you know you have john longstreth like a like a dream drummer like playing this material then we get mm-hmm. to go to the studio and we got to record at um uh silver Chord, which is uh the guys from gojira have uh have that studio space but the right. the main engineer that does it is this guy um johan oh, who's yep. yeah so he's like the front of house engineer nice. for gojira and like other big bands and stuff he's awesome super talented it was like amazing to record with them and the yeah, that energy of... in that room was like so cool like they had they had cool stuff in the studio like they had this uh original artwork from the effigy the forgotten suffocation album in the lobby and shit do you know <laughs> so, why that's there i found out why that's there i heard hmm. some story about like somebody replaced someone's hvac system and it was you want to talk about the energy but... in that room <laughs> When you think about energy, d- does air conditioning ever come to mind? Yeah. Because Doug Cerrito installed the air conditioning unit in that uh, building. Yeah. That's so crazy. Um, 
So yeah, yeah. Keeping, keeping musicians' temperatures as low as possible while they're jamming. Dude. Yeah, it was a really cool experience because Johan, as as Joe said, he's our front of house guy, but he also does all their their tracking, I guess. Um, yeah. At that point in time, mm-hmm. Elliot Hoffman was still involved. I don't know if he's still involved with that place or not, but I know he was then. Um, but yeah, it was really cool because it was like right on the edge of Queens, almost in Brooklyn, I think. And just this big open room, tiny little control room. They had a little upstairs loft where they kept gear and yeah, all kinds of neat tech toys. Yeah, it's it built. It's built by built by. Uh, yeah, thanks, uh, Ian. Ian got it. Gojira and Elliot Hoffman built the studio. Johan yeah. manages and he's the main engineer in there. I'd love to have Elliot on the show, by the way. Shout out Hoff. He's Elliot really Hoffman. cool. Yeah. That, that was also some of the inspiration for like getting into that space. Cause I heard that uh, the production on their, on uh, the previous like car bomb album was so sick. It was really wild. Then I found the All of them. studio and was like, we got to go to this place. It's really cool. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, and then after that, we got to work with Christian Donaldson on the on the reamping and the mixing and mastering, which oh, was, yeah. he cryptopsy, just, right? Cryptopsy, dude? yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he just makes the most yeah. brutal stuff. It's like really wild. Super so, Quebecian. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Super Quebecian. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's so, that guy is one thing I love about that guy is that guy is not <laughs> afraid to tell you. If it sucks, <laughs> yeah. you, gotta, you gotta appreciate that. Yeah, though, a good a recording people. engineer should. A good recording engineer has to be part therapist and part referee. You know, right? Yeah. You know, he's got to be able to say "fuck," uh, flag. You know, penalty <laughs> ten yards. Stop crying. And <laughs> and also, why are you crying? Are you? That's crying? why I like. That's why I loved working with Zach. Because he you probably worked with Zach, right, John? Straight. I was going to bring that up. Zach, Zach, Zach Oren. Zach Oren. Have not, not yet. Mm. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, he is like the ultimate. Just like doesn't like. He just he doesn't have he the, the West I mean, Coast kid. Yeah, he doesn't have like the bone in his body to tell you like, oh, maybe you just try it again. He goes, he goes like, what, what was that? What is that? Uh, you know yeah. what you're doing there? <laughs> <laughs> you uh, understand that you're doing helpful, this. Though. Right. He's being helpful though. He's not being a. Di- he's not. I mean, no. he sounds like an asshole, but he's like being like. He's like, I thought you knew how to play this. Like, but you again, to- he'll also be like, dude, that was it. That was it. I got. He'll I got that, such a. Know? I got such a rapport with uh, Robert, who does the Origin records, and you'll just hear the button. Mm-hmm. Let's have that again. This time without the suck. <laughs> without the suck. <laughs> and I'm back without there. The I'm back there at the drum kit. I'm on take thirty. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> and then I and then I get it, and then he'll be like, "You're the best," or something like that. Yeah, yeah. But he'll say some pretty rough things. The worst thing he does, the worst thing any recording engineer has ever done to me, is Rob Rebeck, who does the Origin Records, who will order my favorite pizza in the middle of drum tracking and just <laughs> and just eat it in front of you and just <laughs> oh, that's fucked up. All right, do that again. I'm like, did you order a Papa Minsky's? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and be like there's and there'll be none for you when you're done something like that no no he'll, he'll always be like you can come in and have some you know the grease yeah. up the sticks like, man i'm living at two, 260 right now i can't yeah you can't have a, a slice <laughs> will set you down. back a few few bpm dude i think we did get to the slow song on on the on parallel universe record and i think i actually did eat a slice of pizza and then track that song so nice that's actually like cool. 220 or something? 230? I don't know how slow. It's, no, it's kind of... <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. It's got some blast beats in it, but it isn't fast. It's the slowest origin song in existence. Yeah. Wow. Definitely. So I took a All piss. Right. So I, yeah, so you guys have to keep going. <laughs> what? Dude, you've been back in the conversation for almost 10 minutes now. I, don't know, I mean, I just talked about a, a guy that records, but just asshole recording people. But I mean... Like you're just getting into that. That's a good. That's a good thing to have. I don't like. Well, let me let me preface for the you know for the people at home listening. He's not an asshole. He's one of my favorite people ever. But yeah, he definitely has fun with us guys in poking at us. I think. Well, I think that's a healthy thing, though. That I mean, that's what we're talking about. We it's because you wouldn't want uh, a a guy who's behind the the board 
and tell you it was a good take when it wasn't. And then it's locked into eternity when the record comes out and you look back on it like, ah, that wasn't the take, you know? So you want a guy to just be like real with you. And, and still there's, there's going to be that back and forth too, where the artist says, no, actually, I think that that was the take. So those are the back and forth in the recording. Those are the weird ones. When, you hit a take that feels perfect. Mm-hmm. That's it. You say, ah, one more. And then you hit another take and it doesn't feel so perfect. You might have hit the boxes, but it's feel, it feels like it's uphill. It, it, if you feel like you're plugging every note and there's no flow to it, then you go right. back and you listen to it. And the one that it's the weird one when you don't, the one that felt wonderful is not that take. It doesn't sound, it's so strange how things sound totally on the, on the other side. Feeling. Yeah. Just, you know, I'm, it's like hearing your voice on um, um, voicemail or something. And oh my god, is that my voice? <laughs> kind of <laughs> slightly off, you know. Yeah. Our perception of anything we do really is is totally not totally, but it's just a, a few degrees off of what everybody else is experiencing. Dude, hmm. dude, uh, have you ever done DMT? <laughs> Actually, I mean, I, ha- oh, I just answered it like a foot walk right on the Joe Rogan trap. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Joel and I have uh, experimented with that. Never yeah. done it. It, uh, I haven't either. I don't do drugs. Yeah, yeah it's, pretty, As, it's pretty wild. It's but I think wild. We'll just, it's wild. I think the whole thing, but also with music, is like like playing music and performing it. Like you're in like a certain state, and then like when you're listening to it or experiencing it live, or listening to it on record, it's like different states. Like I don't know. Oh yeah, and yeah. like someone's standing there watching you play and you're playing you're both in different states like person playing you know you not usually you got like adrenaline and you know you're in all i mean they are too but not the same i don't know it's like uh, so much you know i i used to get all like i don't know you know you get all like super like hyped up you know you're like Mm -hmm. i don't know i remember watching you do two back-to-back sets (laughs) being like god damn that was fucking cool i want to do that someday Oh, dude, that's done it a couple of times, and I don't know if I want to do it anymore. But, but like, oh, that's a to, young move, right? It's trying, a young it move, is yeah. a young move, man. Trying to keep that adrenaline, yeah, and like between, between sets, between well, sets is well, like. Awful. I think we were just doing like thirty-five minute sets, though thirty. So it was like an hour total, you know. It was so, the birth and odious yeah. mortem, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, but thank you, dude. That that's a huge dude. Well, that, that was the night that we were all in, I think, Oklahoma City. And oh, was it St. Louis? Maybe it was, it was St. Louis. Yeah, maybe it was St. Louis because like half that, the city had no power. That's one, dude. yep, yep. And, it was like a tornado yeah. went through or something. Yeah, yeah nobody yeah. got paid. Yeah, and the promoter was just sitting at the bar drinking, and I think, I think Paul had a had a mind to take him out back and beat him with a club or something. <laughs> <laughs> and, Allegedly, I don't even remember all that. But it's we, tough to remember, but I had we, uh, just I had just returned to Origin at that point in time. Yeah, that's right. I mean, was, James Lee was there, or James King. James, James King. James King was, was there, and he did. Yeah, he was yeah, there I was sitting next to him. Right. He was, I was sitting next to him, and he was like, po- yeah. he was like pointing at you, going like, "No, you fucked that part up. No, you fucked that part up." He was like, <laughs> "I didn't fuck that part up. I just played it right." <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so funny, dude. Uh, James, uh, yeah, he was he was calling out Odia songs. It was pretty cool, dude. He was like, "Just more." That fun. was fun. This yeah, yeah, there's like yeah. six people there. We're like, whatever, dude. Yeah, because the, the city was all like, whatever. Yeah, no one could get out or something because of the, the whatever the story. Yeah, that was the first time I did meet you. Uh, I don't know. I probably mentioned it in your episode. I feel too. like that that's the first, first time, time we all met. We... Probably. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think it was the first time we all. Yeah, I mean, I met Paul. I think before that, but. No, I still tell a story from that show like every like few months of uh what uh story James Lee Fre- no just the member James the freight train you know he like would fucking drive he was always the driver and like yeah, knew where how to get everywhere he was so he was right. always he was like don't go that way if you go that way don't stop at stop signs <laughs> oh yeah <he's> <laughs> and, and, not, and we went that yeah. way mm. and just through GPS because we were gone we were all like tired and shit frazzled uh, yep, we went that yep. way he's so all don't go the way the GPS tells you just go the other way. And like go yeah. the long way, and so and GPS is you know the big boxes they're brand new, oh, and yeah. um Garmin. we go down that way, and all of a sudden we're stopping, we're getting into stop signs, and people are like running up to the car, yeah, and we're like oh shit, what the fuck? Because he's all dude, there's no power over there. That's like the gnarliest part of town, oh. in St. Louis, which is obviously like second or first gnarly or deadliest city. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah it's we stay in a hotel experience. that night because I think our van was getting fucked with in the parking lot of a hotel that on that tour. I don't even remember. I, have, I just remember getting, that's just as, the, as far as I remember is like James. Was like, I remember him just going, "Do not go that way." And <laughs> before we knew it, like it wasn't like a perfect that way. It was like the left and the right and the left. Don't go right after that left or something, you know. And we did that. And we just had to fucking run stop signs. Like, you go that way, run up every stop sign you hit. And I was uh, like, and I thought he was just being dramatic a little bit. And I was like, oh, okay, whatever. Oh, nope. <laughs> so he was, he was, he had a gift for that. And yeah, he did like for the entire time I was back in the band after I came back. So when we all met up till mm -hmm. the time he was done with the band, he drove every goddamn day. Yep. Um, he did not load in. Every now and then, if he if, if he was feeling good, he would he would load in just for the fun of it. But for the most part, he'd drive all day and he'd get in and go find some place to take a nap or get a beer or whatnot. And that was like General Lee. That's a, yeah. I just think that even though that you you mentioned how small the crowd was, it's just cool for two tours to cross that, each other's paths and high five real that quick night, yeah. and and do a show together and be like all right see you later we're off doing this and you yeah. just go off in we two were, separate directions and we were out by ourselves oh yeah that's oh, true that's, yeah. right there wasn't and, any other bands and dave lombardo had just rejoined slayer <laughs> oh my god so many times <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm remembering what it was so we i forgot we, we played with origin our on our little was our CD release show or something? Wait, oh, wait, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The Aptos the Club. The Aptos Club. And so that was James King. James they were doing yeah. those. Yeah. So that was, we played with them uh, a couple times. And we, we knew Paul from, from Guitar Center and, and, of course, Dan Kenny and, and you guys. Like, you guys knew him. So I met him and stuff. Mm -hmm. Dude. And we're seeing the chat here. Uh, Paul, dude, Guitar Center. Dude. Straight up, dude. I did all of my rec like recording equipment, everything, my drum set, everything. All I got, dude, years ago, ten years ago, all from Paul, dude. Fucking yeah, he just give you Paul. such a deal, like way oh, too dude, good of a deal. Guitar center master, dude. Yeah, that dude, was... we would go in there and he, and he, it would be his break, and he would just hang out with it, us and play his guitar. Yeah. For yeah. Us. that was a point in time when guitars, when like guitar center kind of like really ruled the world at that point. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and you know that's the unfortunate thing is that he doesn't have that anymore it's no he's, he's still there but he can't mm -hmm. do that he can't do those hookups they, yeah they, no, totally yeah they, they put a stop to all that and because there was I a lot of guys around watched. the country that could do that and yep yeah. mm -hmm. no i worked there for a little while and i was i was i worked with one and they could just mark it down to like a little above cost and yeah, like wow. and it was in, it was literally like almost half the price yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. it was insane or maybe even sometimes even more than half the price but yeah, that, remember, that was the old days, good old days. It taught a lot of us about markups, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, most yeah. definitely, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I remember like going there when I first like moved up there, and it was like Paul, like, and I just met him, and he like took me. He's like in in, in the guitar. He's like takes me into like the, the like you know the speaker area with all the like you know live sound stuff, and he like showed me echoes like before it had come out. You know, he's like, dude, mm -hmm. he, like blast. He like shut the doors and just. Like, <laughs> <I was> like, <"Whoa." laughs> but yeah so that's like so we knew that with, with james and stuff and then when we came out it was like wait john's back we're like oh because we like we were like huge fans of yeah we geeked yeah, on those I records oh, we were huge yeah dude and so it was just like and we saw i used to see you with skinless and stuff and everything you know we used to go oh my god to shows you know way back and stuff but yeah man it was like so cool that night just to be like you know just to wrap it up on that story it's just like oh john's back in origin how fucking badass you know and so like we were like all stoked on it and i remember your uh carbon fiber drum set that's what yeah. it was yeah. yeah so that was super cool i just remember talking to you that night and just be like what this thing's sick and i don't know you've always had the sickest setups too i love your like uh symmetrical setups and like everything just is always like uh, i i always Weaving. see your setup i'm just like that looks so fun to play like i i should set like copy you and try it i don't know i've never done it but it's, uh, you just fall into a hole with your gear and you keep adjusting things yeah oh you dude know, eventually yeah. you have to stop it you know <laughs> yeah. stop adjusting mm. things and i built a house out of symbols uh, yeah <laughs> but i love the symmetrical nature of how you do stuff it's super cool. is that not common with with a lot of drummers is a lot of symmetrical eh. i don't think a lot of people in general listen to listen to their body you know because mm -hmm. You know, you, 
you'll see a lot of drummers that are like reaching for crash cymbals and then you'll see a lot of guitar players that are playing way down here and their wrist is and i just think that there's a lot of people that don't listen to i mean even if they even if they just do mouse and keyboard and they can't figure out why their back hurts and their carpal tunnel happens but, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um i don't know it's like all the bands that i was in uh play faster play more technical you know do everybody's just can you do that can you do that and i'm like well i gotta be able to reach that china so i guess i'll just that and it, you know it's the most undeath metal thing you can you can perceive it's how do you make it easy on yourself and I'm sorry to all the old no, guys, but, but yes, I like to make it easy on myself. The, the yeah, playthrough right. videos, man, uh, the minor playthrough videos that you have, everybody's talking about how every, everything is like perfectly like ergonomic and like the yeah. lowest like range of motion. Like the Strandberg of, of drummers, like the yeah. ergonomic necks and stuff. Oh, oh, wow. It was, it was very nice. like Derek Karate was kind of, I, I think of you a lot like Derek Karate, like, but like, but you were like, I mean, like when I start got got into death metal, like it was like I saw Hate Eternal live on the Conquering tour, and I was like seventeen or something. I was just like, mm. I was like, that was like the first time I was like, you can do that. On the, you can do that. Like that's what? Derek. <laughs> Derek. Yeah. Yeah. That, and I, mean, I had, learned. I learned a lot from that guy. I I was yeah. fortunate to tour with him very early in my career. So, like, what tour was that? Uh, Hate Eternal Origin Nile arch enemy what that, years damn that, <laughs> 2002 it was the first tour arch enemy uh, yeah. did with angela and the band damn nile okay, nile was just releasing in their dark and shrines hate eternal had put out king of all kings and origin had put out informus damn yep. and oh, it was an interesting tour because it was three bands full of <laughs> crazy rednecks just playing absolute <laughs> bonkers death metal and then there's arch enemy from sweden yeah <laughs> and they're, and they're just looked at us so like funny. it was like all the orcs of mordor and then a, then a bunch <laughs> of high elves cindarian elves over here being like, oh my god we've got, oh my god. got clubs and fire and they're over there yeah being, totally yeah. very like they're doing mathematics and yeah. But you know what? Daniel Erlinson, the drummer of Arch Enemy, to this day, he's the kind of guy that will find me before I even know he's in the, the area code. It'll just be like mm -hmm. a hand on my shoulder, and I'll turn around, hey, how you doing? And I'm just like, ooh, he's the best. Definitely. Awesome. Um, that's, yeah, so that's got cool. to learn a hell of a lot from, from Derek Roddy and Tony Lariano at that point in time. Oh, yeah, dude. You're from Kansas. That's right. Originally, Kansas, New York. Okay, okay that's right. That's right. I live in New York. I'm from Kansas. I was like, Redneck, you're in New York, huh? Oh, and I was like, oh, yeah, Kansas. No, well, well <laughs> Redneck, as in we all had cut off camo shorts and sliced, sliced up shirts. And hey, man, what's going on? Mm -hmm. I like blast beats. <laughs> yeah. Just get drunk. And they were I mean, just we all kind of like the same over here, just <laughs> without the accent. Yeah. You know? I mean, well, you had. Ugh. So, Hate Eternal, that was four dudes from Florida. You had, you know, uh, uh, you know, you had Eric. Derek and Jared, rest in peace. And then they had Phil, who was yeah. their, their their tech. And then you had the guys from Nile. They're from South Carolina. <clears throat> South Carolina? Mm -hmm. Tony's from Florida. Yeah, totally. Um, and then we're from Kansas. James is from Minnesota, but still. Yeah, that counts. Who's counting? You know, well, that counts. So, <laughs> but yeah, so that was maybe the most blistering death metal tour ever man uh, you, i remember that show when you guys came to new york and played the chance it was like one of my favorite shows of like we all time we did <laughs> play the chance so and we had all of our gear we got all of our gear out of the vehicle and we had it on the back because like the guy that was supposed to let us in the venue was going to be late so it was like i'm going to be there at five and we got to get in we got to get everything done and I remember <clears throat> it started raining on all of our gear. And I remember Derek, his his drum throne got left out in the rain and he had the the the, the cloth the cloth seat. And I was playing his kit. So oh, I don't remember what we did. I think we just got it back in we got it covered up somehow, but the drum throne was out in the rain and it was the last to be so he just wrapped a bunch of plastic bags around it. <clears throat> and sat on it. It was like, <laughs> yeah, that was the 
the chance was cool. I haven't played in there for a long time. Dang. All right. Really let's, awesome. Let's dig into Joe a little bit. Let's get your your history. Your uh, what was it like as a kid? You got siblings? Did you, anybody else creative in the family? What kind of art? Uh, Any- yeah, I don't have any siblings. I, I back like when I was really getting into music when I was very young. Like my my grandmother was like pretty creative, and she helped me get like a lot of music that I was interested in. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I like there was some stuff I heard like the first music that like I was just kind of given to me that I wasn't interested in. Like when I got like a first CD player or something like that. Yeah. But then like um, around that time, like once I got like a couple of bands that I got into, then I, I quickly got into like rock and metal stuff at like a pretty young age, like around like 10 or so, I think when when I was really into it. How old are you? Uh, I'm 40 now. I just turned 40 okay. recently. Dang, I never know so how old you are. Dude, you, don't look, you definitely do not look 40, dude. I was like, between I'm 20 and 30. I thought I was talking to a young one right now. <laughs> okay, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, honestly, he is young, though. Yeah, yeah true. I was <laughs> waiting shot. for him to say 30, though, you know? Yeah. Nah, no, 40 yeah, is I've been, 40 been the new 20, dude. Come on. Good. Yeah, I'm turning I'm, 40 this year. <laughs> Joel. Yeah. Yeah, when do you, you're year. turning 40 in this summer, four, dude. Yeah, four months. I get to I'm, watch Joel turn 40 before I do, so I get to stick it to him for I'm John. How old are you? So I'm leg up. None of your fucking business. <laughs> you're 40, you're 43. <laughs> it sucks because we I was muted, by the way. One thing I wanted to shout you out. We were we were muted, by the way, and I was like, we were all being quiet, and I was all Peter Steele's asshole. And no one heard it. And I was I thought I was gonna kill. Oh, man. But I was muted though, so was, that's when it sucked. But anyway, so uh, you're 40 what? 50 what? 60 what? <laughs> I don't I'll just have an look age, dude. You don't have to have an age. Yeah, you I, gotta 70, have a, dude. Leave my I don't I don't go by years. You do actually. You don't look like the oldest person here, though. Three hundred no. centimeters old. <laughs> Three hundred centimeters. Fuck you! I'm not telling you my age. No. My yeah, grandma dude, took I, that look to at her you. Death. You got a new background. I didn't even. I forgot that that was happening. It's not a week. background. It's a fucking new whole studio. I know you're in a new room. <laughs> that's Jill's virtual background. Yes, yeah, my virtual. Well, watch, watch the you're... watch it break up when I move my hand. A little bit. <laughs> well, it took me a second. You, to realize on the that other one, you should put the uh, house. Instead of two Cali Death logos, put the uh, the zombie on one. No, of it's those. supposed to, you can only see one when you don't zoom in, and that's a foul up on my part. So next oh, time, okay. I'll, I'll, this is my first time doing it from here. It, my my work dude. my work monitor's in the back with like important information on it, so I had to just put a picture over it. Is all I did. Trial and error, dude. But that's sick that you're doing it from your new spot, dude. Yeah, I'm stoked. I can't wait till I have that room. I, Put an offer on a house, dude. Let's see. Oh, Ooh. get it. Nice. Cali Death, give me some Cali Death love and cross your fingers, listeners and homies and I all you. I thought you got the other house. You didn't. Right. Nah, dude, this I pulled out real of that. estate. Oh, I know. Now we're we're going into me, but yeah, no, well, yeah, I pulled dude, out this, of I got to sell this Aspen place. It's, <laughs> it's on the market. Oh, shit. Nah, dude, yeah, I we pulled were... out because shit was not chill on the plumbing. It would have cost me a lot more money. Uh, well, that's yeah. shit was not chill on the plumbing. That's, <laughs> that's, that's not what you want. Yeah. I mean, you want the shit. You want the shit to be chill. With, with <laughs> you want it to be cold, nice and cold <laughs> shits. Not yeah. But uh, <laughs> no, definitely. So uh, I don't know why we got on to age. So we're talking oh, about. Oh, dude, okay. wait. John's over at Casey's now, dude. <laughs> I just popped over. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Hey, that was quick, dude. I, that was we, I didn't realize that John was just yeah. in a different room at Casey's. Spot. Oh, he's in the it's same room. He's, just, he's right yeah. next to him, just different. Just, no, I know, but he just came out of the the book. Oh, shit. Just moved. Now he's in the alleyway, alleyway in New York. Quick. Yeah, it looks like Sesame Street. <laughs> <laughs> Go back to the new bricks. Yeah, it's I was I was worried it was going to be fucking Peter Steele's. Now I just realized. <laughs> wait, now I'm scared, dude. Was that is that a fake background that has been? No, the it's whole not. Time you can tell. I, yeah, you can tell it's not. He slapped the heater too, so I got I got information. Oh, but, wow. uh, right. physical interaction with the background. All right, we're chill. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for any listeners out there, but we were, we were fucking with the backgrounds. Dear listener, we're playing with the backgrounds. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, uh, shit. All right. Right now. All right, so Joe, Joe. So, All right. Yeah. So, so 10. 40 years old. So well, 10 years old. So what? That's probably what, like Green Day and stuff? What, what, yeah, what that stuff on? came out around then. Yeah. Then oh, there yeah. was like the grunge stuff. And mm -hmm. um, like, but the thing is, there's like some bands that like stuck with me that were like not a phase, I think. Like, because I got, I remember I got into Nirvana when I was younger, but like I didn't. I didn't like keep listening to them like growing up and I don't really listen to them now, but no. like, I also got into guns and roses, which I still love mm. guns and roses. Like they're great. Mm, nostalgia band. Yep. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm. One of the best breakthrough albums of all time. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. And the then, biggest. yeah, with the metal stuff, I got into Metallica and Megadeth, but then my parents like were like, not so enthusiastic about me getting into metal so much at a young age right. and everything. So I had like the whole Metallica discography at the time and they like pitched the whole thing. Was it, uh, uh, was it religious religion related? Is they, that not what? really. They just like no. evil. Yeah. They just didn't want me to get like, you know, a trench I don't know. They, yeah they, they had like some idea that like you know people that listen to metal are like burnouts and like yeah they came off the satanic panic dude yeah the exactly satanic, yeah you know that, that's that what was, was, that was burned that into our parents eyes because they were old enough to see that you know? yeah and but we the, were young ones while that was happening yeah but then the ironic thing is megadeth like they didn't know about megadeth because they weren't as popular as metallica was at the time so i yeah. had all i had rust in peace and i just like listen to that like that was like your crazy. loophole your little secret <laughs> doorway in dude yeah yeah i mean nice. that album i think was like superior at that time anyway so uh, mm -hmm. like i think it, we it should just re-record cool. rust in peace as neurectomy <laughs> there you go <laughs> just play it backwards yeah, yeah. <laughs> I sound like no, I, joe and i have have hit a couple of those yeah those 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 songs bits and pieces but yeah we also played some anthrax shit one night yeah we? definitely yeah, yeah. mega death and anthrax stuff so uh, how long until you were sneaking the good stuff you know that yeah i mean after that like my parents didn't mind they were like okay oh, okay so, so yeah metal, like so then like all through like once i was in like middle school and then getting into high school like by high school i was totally into death metal by then like it, it like. Did you find just, like minded friends at this time listening to the same stuff? Uh, yeah, that I picked up the guitar like around middle school, and then like I tried to find bandmates like by like beginning of high school and everything. And then like once I was jamming with other people, we were like getting into more uh, serious metal stuff. And then mm -hmm. there's like a, a well known like station by us, uh, Seton Hall Pirate Radio. Like they, they have, um, they had this thing like uh, Monday Night Mayhem on. If you like stayed up at midnight, like you'd hear like just all death metal. Mm -hmm. Sick. Yeah, and uh, then what, I heard like Slaughter of the Soul at the gates at that time. So did you skip like, new metal altogether? I know John. No. You, yeah, that's you, the thing. No, I got into John's too old. <laughs> John's too old. To, to, he wasn't in the new metal. You didn't hit the new yeah. with you, right, John? I sniffed at it and didn't like it. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, 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 corn corn came out, and yeah, you have to be a right age for that, I right? Checked it, yeah. uh, not not for me. Yeah, yeah. That's teenage all angst. Yeah. You you have like a certain amount of teenage angst from, uh, between the ages of thirteen and fifteen, or maybe yeah. sixteen. Yep. Yeah, it, 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 it was some... I it, had some, it had some, yeah. If it, when we, if did we that were fish, actually happen? When when did the new metal thing actually? Ninety two, ninety three. Yeah. Well, it started. It started to bubble up in there, but really, That's they it didn't starting. call yeah, it yeah. new metal. I would I would say that Chaos AD is my was the link though. That was the, the link between uh, actual new metal bands and like I think that, metal. But, you listen to that album that was 93 and there's i wouldn't elements. Call i would not say chaos 80 is no, oh, no i'll call it roots new metal no, i would say yeah, that yeah, the, sure <laughs> so we're talking that. about we're talking about a a, a seed that's blossoming that yeah, yeah. chaos oh, so AD they, they kind of started okay yeah. is the seed of this new metal thing that happened maybe four or five years later but there's these sprinkled seeds like 
if we're talking uh car bomb neck is a band that uh they some members were previously in if you listen to the band neck that's an mm-hmm. earlier uh version of new metal that nobody really talks about in the mid 90s mm-hmm. but the new metal actual term new metal happened late 90s like well, i guess 90- the question is is when did um Oh, they Whoa. didn't suck. Sorry. Go back. I thought, what was I, thought, that? I, thought it said, I thought it said suck. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I thought it said if it sucked. And I was like, shit. And I took it off real quick. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I thought it said if it sucked. And I was like, shit. And I took it off real quick. I was like, <laughs> 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 I don't know. Yeah, you're no. just putting up roasted com- roasting comments. They're all just like Love- having a chill conversation and just a roast comes in. Just Let the roasts people. come in, man. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, yeah. No, I will. But, I will. Um, so. No, I, the, I yeah, co- yeah. Corn's first album came out in '94. There you go. In that's middle true. school yeah. around that time. I was. So uh... There was a couple of years where I was rollerblading, wearing Jenko jeans, and <laughs> oh, I had <laughs> the Corn perfect demographic. Album. And uh, <laughs> you for, hit, you hit for two the, seconds. The, uh, yeah, yeah. I went to Ozfest a couple times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ooh, yeah. But, uh, I had just joined Angel Corps. <laughs> but like, oh, shit. you are old. Jeez, I'm just kidding. Uh, 48. We're still finding ourselves as humans, Jesus and he's Christ. like, oh, dude, I'm just John didn't tell me to tell anyone, but he's 48. He looks like he's fucking maybe 36 to 42. Hey right? guys, cigarettes. I'm not even we kiss, take kiss care of each other. We take care of ourselves, dude. I think if, I were like, if, if it was like a forced bet that I had to make for a thousand dollars, I would say you can see it in here and here. It's 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 happening. But it's slower we, than most people, though. That's good. If we all yeah. went out to the club right now, I think every single one of us would take a woman home, dude. Because we're fucking handsome men. Well, we're taking men, so shut the fuck yeah. up. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> have a fucking fantasy for the podcast, real quick, dude. I'm not a nerd. Have you ever, have you ever heard about <laughs> yes In that and? Case, I'll tell you what I want to know. Have you ever heard of <laughs> yes and? That's improv. Did you say yes and? All right. I've heard of Never Peter Steele's uh, no, but I mean, uh, no. So that yeah, that was like at that point. So yeah, I, I feel like the people that are between the ages of thirty five, six, and forty, yeah, the new metal thing hit them hard, and it just like missed yeah. everyone. I mean, most people went punk, a different yep. direction to kind of get into metal and stuff, or or you know, found Iron Maiden early or something like that. But um, that's kind of what I've noticed that angsty age just like it's just a little fucking it's like a weather pattern that's nailed this these ages just like sp- yeah splash them, you know well it's yeah weather but pattern the, generation pattern then <laughs> exactly like some stuff i think like pulled me out of that though because like around the same time i also heard fear factory like demanufacture oh, which was and, considered new metal for a little while yeah right people were calling them that yeah <clears throat> but soul of a new machine was like brutal at, at that yeah, time yeah. and then like mm-hmm. Yeah, I know there's nothing new metal about Soul of a New Machine. No, but, nothing at all. But, yeah. you know, if people were calling it that, sure. It's crazy. So then with the band stuff, like we were getting the Elise's like DM5 or 4 modules and stuff and playing around with triggers and everything and trying to get like a heavier sound like that. <laughs> but then, uh, yeah, and then also Cryptopsy, in high, when I was in high school, they released Whisper Supremacy, no, which same. like... Yep. That Who am I? I yeah, <laughs> once I heard that song... Yeah. Cold hate warm blood. It like, oh, yeah. was like the most exciting ah. thing that ever happened. Same with me, dude. That was the song I would show my friends, be like, dude, I found this new one that yeah. crushes all your other shit. That was like the one that you could like people that were like, dude, like Slayer sick. It's like fuck off. Here we yeah, go. exactly. You know, that, like, that was always the game back then. So you think Slayer's cool? Have you heard DSI? Yep, that's I went. I made that jump. My brother made that jump too for me. Yeah, yeah that's. Yeah, but like yeah. when, like as Joe was saying, when like Whisper Supremacy got put out, that's when all the bands went from like 220 BPM to 250 BPM. Yep. <laughs> yeah. 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 Everything yeah, went. Raised. You know, there was yeah. definitely a tempo Banks race flow. that happened after all yeah, that. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was just totally insane. Nowadays, like, referred to as early 2000s. MySpace, fuck you, metal. <laughs> fuck so, you metal. <laughs> Joe, Cryptopsy was your Great first BPM wars <laughs> uh, introduction to like tech extreme type shit. Yeah, I think so. Because uh, I mean, I was in the death metal, like like I like at the gates and stuff, but the, mm-hmm. but they weren't okay. like super techy or anything. And then um, yeah, yeah. 
like I listened to some black metal stuff, but I never really got into it too much. Like it, it felt too like monotonous and everything. Then black yeah, metal mm-hmm. was the, the the storm cloud that hit us, Joel. Okay. Okay. I was yeah, because that's just like and black metal. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like you won. Fuck I you. That for me. Yeah. But at the at the time, it was convenient because there that brought more ladies to the shows. No, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, they are more of a have more of a female fan base for sure. It's more of a because there's a look. It's a look involved. It's, I'm not saying they don't like the music. I don't gonna. There is a that. poetry to it. <laughs> there's <laughs> more fashion involved. I mean, there's really fashion involved in all of it if you think about it. Like, I got black male's most fashionable. I, though, I, I would chose say. to wear this shirt this week on this show, dude. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit of fashion, you know. It's New York oh, yeah. fashion. Yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> the <laughs> chicks, the chicks go way into it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> at the studio like, we had in Astoria they practiced down the hall from yeah, us they do. it was oh, pretty yeah. cool <laughs> maybe full kind of blackface but uh so um <laughs> I'm just kidding I'm sorry I just had to make it <laughs> zombie face more just, like I it I said kind of turned his entire life upside down face <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, no but I definitely see the 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 allure of the look for black metal kind of brought out more, you know, people that have opposite genitalia. Um, <laughs> I'm a fucking scientist, dude. But uh, no, as far as so going into so at the gates was a huge one for me too, though. At the gates like that kind of going from like the new metal and stuff, and at the gates had you know a lot of the yeah. soul. Someone shows you to do that, you're like, oh my god, this is catchy, catchy way riffs. More aggressive. Yep, catchy riffs, riffs that you'll never dude. forget. Yeah, that are just still ingrained in your brain, no matter, you know, if you're into it at a certain point in life. It's every riff is from that album is like, like, oh, that's where you know exactly exactly where I was when I heard that. Like, I still remember like first yeah. hearing that album. So yeah. from there, you went on to what? Uh, I don't know. I mean, then like, there was other stuff I liked that was not like getting like more and more extreme. Like, I like Carcass and everything around the same time um i also got into arch enemy like the early arch enemy like before mm, the burning bridges s- switched to angela and all that uh yeah that album black earth and all that um but then yeah then in college i got into like more uh, around college time was like then getting into nile the origin the all the bands from that tour that we were talking about earlier like that that was uh Pretty cool. And then, yeah, what, after that, what like, Nile album was out at that time. There was Black Seeds of Vengeance. Uh, nice. Yeah. That was, was the beginning really of the great BPM hell, Wars. <laughs> I, yeah, I would sure. say Black that. Seeds, no, for sure. That definitely was. Uh, it a, was a step up from everything that I was guys, listening to before that. Who of you were on the the relapse message board? Uh, yeah, I was. Just, I, I, yeah, I dabbled in that. And I the mean, Derek Roddy forums and all well, that. Well, SMN News. The, 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 the Relapse message board specifically in that when Black Seas was coming out. Mm. It was interesting because that was when that was when Metalheads at Large, I guess, first heard the term 250 BPM. Uh, yeah. And so yeah. all of a sudden it was just, yeah, that's really fast. And that's faster and that's really fast mm-hmm. but that's 250 bpm over there yeah and that's one of those Derek oh, roddy no. moves man <laughs> he, he mm-hmm. doesn't want to i don't know if he wants it on his on his head but that when when black seeds came out chapter for transforming into a snake was the single mm. and everybody was what yeah. yeah he he knocked down he knocked down the dam and then the floodgates come behind it yeah. everybody is like and it happened that way because one of the guys in the band was we we had Metal Maniacs, the magazine, and right. we were reading a, a Nile article or our Nile interview, and some yes, yeah, it's got you know there's these blast beats that are 250 BPM, and we're just like, what does that mean? I mean, <laughs> I think I know what that means, but yeah, yeah, That's it, dude. yeah. I'm sorry. So, Go back uh, to Ed Gates. No, I mean, but, but just to tell you that real quick, I mean, amongst the catacombs is the first death metal CD I ever bought. Oh shit! Know? And uh, and then I got into the Cannibal after that. And then I went and saw that show, and then I was like, then I saw Hate Eternal opened and stuff, and I was like, holy fuck, what the hell is that? And so yeah, but like, uh, 
but yeah, Nile, like, dude, I mean, Nile has just always been such a great, insane band. And uh, fucking, oh, dude, when Black Seeds came out, it was like such a big deal and so ridiculous. Totally. So it's really cool that you're thinking, of, like, it's interesting. I want to hear that song again, just like listen to it. But uh, yeah, dude, Roddy. What, kind of chapter? It, yeah. It was, it was Carpet Rolls Metronome Kick at 250 BPM. Mm-hmm. It was like the first time anybody ever heard. <laughs> right, and right. at that velocity yeah, yeah and that much yeah. of it because that was just like he keeps doing that yeah and, so that's yeah. called a carpet roll for us non-drummers correct i somebody on instagram said carpet roll and i was like what's a carpet roll and he goes ending tom roll i was like oh okay <laughs> Wait, what was it? in my head ever since a descending tom yeah roll? it's just you know, it's just yeah. drum, 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 all the way down. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. there down, Tom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Down. It's like the, the end time begins part, Casey. The oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That would be a carpet. That would be a very, very <laughs> What's a carpet? Is there carpet a carpet roll? bomb? Because I'm trying roll. to think of like an actual carpet roll. That doesn't make sense because it doesn't make noise. Rolling out of the carpet, you're maybe rolling it out going. Oh, like, you know, yeah. it's like an unrolling a fruit roll up. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Snare tongue, snare tongue, snare tongue. I'll take it. Yeah, yeah. See right here. I mean, snare tongue, snare tongue, snare tongue, tongue, tongue. You know, I just want that to make okay. sense to me. Carpet doesn't factor unless it, what's a carpet bomb? Is there a carpet bomb? in my trip bomb? Blast? Like an that's, actual bomb? That that's kills a war. thousands of people. <laughs> and that's a war. Maybe, that, oh, maybe that's where it comes that's from. Like carpet carpet bombing is like bombing over a whole area like <laughs> well like you guys are bombing like... over a whole area dude right <laughs> there dude. dude and you're just carpet bombing your whole drum set <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> i think that might be come on guys i that makes more sense than rolling out a carpet listeners I mean, please it... chime in yeah. so far ian so far ian wins the pretzel <laughs> yeah rolling it out rolling it. He's, i'm just rolling it out I love that. The I'm just rolling it out. I'm just rolling it out. I'm talking about kill. Yeah, I guess that it's is. A, it's a it is. carpet roll with double bass under it. <laughs> carpet roll. <laughs> carpet bomb is a carpet roll with bass, <laughs> double bass. Hey, maybe we're, yeah. we're, we're developing. I'm gonna call them fruit roll up. Right uh, fruit roll up is a is a starting from the floor. Tom coming up to the top. Oh, it's back roll. It's a reverse carpet roll. <laughs> reverse carpet roll is exactly what you hear when you say carpet r- r- roll in reverse. Come on, guys. We're just trying to make sense of these terms right now. That's all we're trying to do. Anyway, so neurectomy has a ton of carpet rolls in it. <laughs> That's, oh, under the Nintendo think, parts, the warp zone yeah. things? Or, or... Oh, the warp zone things, those are, yeah, those are definitely carpet rolls, but they have, um, they have uh, kicks at the end. So it was like, yeah. Because it sounds like the warp zone from Mario Brothers. Yeah. Yeah, there's some wild shit that you guys, uh, the wacky grind stuff that I love. It's it's yeah. sprinkled throughout a lot of that stuff, yeah. dude. So I kind of, I mean, I don't want to fast forward. I still want to go through your 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 journey through metal because yeah. you had to have hit this you know wacky grind too and i i'm a big fan of that style and i want to know what bands you came across in that little corner of this thing yeah uh and I were you finding so. it on your own that's i mean you're my age so like i had like-minded people with me yeah. Like, who's the homies, dude? Like, like other musicians that you were meeting, or even just people that were just loving ex- extreme music and and feeding stuff off of each other. Yeah, but I mean, by then I had a lot of friends that were into the same stuff and was going to a lot of shows and stuff. Um, but uh, in college, also, you're saying? Yeah, but yeah. I remember when I don't know if you guys are into Dylan, like the. That album, Calculating Infinity. Oh, with, dude, uh, that's like, a, uh, okay, yeah, dude, that was a big one for us. I mean, uh, if okay. all right, all right. But yeah, because uh, some people can't take have, the voice. Like, okay. the, there's a couple bands I like where the voice is like a little, like, kind of uh, too uh, irritating, like that. But 
No, you know, it's not like as deep as the, the you know. <laughs> and they're they're getting back together and doing that again. They're, they're I know. They got yeah. Dimitri back on vocals and they're yeah. going to do yeah. a little run. Nice. I got. I'm going to see them in New York. It'll be pretty cool. Oh, that's yeah. a perfect. Dude, place to we're be nice. we're down with the real shit, dude. That's I think that it comes down to it doesn't matter what style of metal it is, doesn't matter what yeah. style of vocals it is. We've all come to this age where we just know what the real shit was that we all got exposed to. And calculating Infi- infinity is one of those truly legendary albums to me. Candaria, I, I I agree with this. Yeah, Candaria too. And then yeah. also like I mean, this is not heavy at all, but I know um you guys are into spastic ink, like they're on oh, yeah. Charizard. Oh, yeah, stuff, dude. Oh yes. yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah, my listen, brother, I, I, I had the, the the total advantage of my brother giving me he gave me um calculating infinity and chaos fear from a sugar in one in one handoff, and then yeah. he gave me spastic ink like within that same like couple months. He's a solid yeah. this shit just shreds everything though, so just check this yeah. out. And it was yeah, like yeah. back in like it was like 2000, 2001 Dude. or something. He's all check this out, and I was like, What the fuck is yep. I was like, yeah. I was pissed when I heard it. I was like, That doesn't this doesn't make sense. Yeah, I was pissed. <laughs> and uh yeah, in high school, I went to go see Slayer with a bunch of friends in the city, and then Meshuggah opened up, and we'd, we'd never heard Meshuggah, and it was just like the heaviest band I've ever seen in my life nice. at that time. When did you, uh, look at you with the with the wardrobe change, <laughs> Mr. I didn't even Long notice John. that. Does anybody call you Long John Streth? I just feel like I want to call you Long John Streth. Vaughn has the silly names, man. He's, you're muted. You're muted, but it was probably a funny response. Oh, your headset, maybe. There it is. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh fuck yeah, dude! Love it. Oh, um, that was good. So, uh, what were we talking? Wait, wait. Were we, yeah, were wardrobe we change while other people are talking. There was best thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, fast again and um. What. Were you digging just online? Did you did you find spastic on your own? Or was that fed to yeah, you? Yeah, I, f- I found that on my own. It, it was somehow I found it when I was like downloading music on like LimeWire or something like that. Uh, yeah, I found like somebody's collection had it. And right, it was, like awesome. That's uh, another bonus is to have a homie that is downloading from LimeWire or yeah. Winamax. You get the yeah. like so many bands and, and, and as an artist and as somebody who should be saying book downloading for free yeah. i got exposed to so much yeah from other i never did it because i only DC had plus my plus. parents computer did you ever fuck with dc plus plus back then? i remember r.i.p like trevor stern and i like we we're talking about like old school oh, downloading dc plus plus like he would just i mean we go in you you yeah. have to get yeah, yeah. i know oh That's yeah cool. so shout cool. out but he was telling me like he used to go on DC Plus Plus, and that's exactly what I did. I found out you had to be like you have to be sharing a certain amount of music. You have to have it like mm-hmm. correct. You have to be have it indexed correctly, and then they mm-hmm. would let you into these like hubs that had oh, like yeah. you get someone that had like like minded music as you, and you just fucking steal their whole, whole collection and just like listen yeah. to it. It would take you know back in the day it was taking you know like a few hours to download an album, but like I would just go overnight and just like wake up to like four new albums and be like fuck yeah, and just go through mm-hmm. that shit. But like it was it was a uh, it was virus free music sharing and you can get like glump glumps of it. <laughs> Anyways, Dude, uh... <laughs> no, we talk about so much about how we love physical media, but now there is, there is something that we don't talk about much is we That's did cool. give in to that. You know, we gave in to the free music thing because it was just an ins our first feel of instant access to a new thing to manifest fullness to sulk. Yeah, glump, glumping, glump. <laughs> we did, we did feed that machine though, and it was funny because target I mean, missed, Jill. When it, was, <laughs> when it was going on, and Lars was in the news and all that, and oh, Lars, deal. I mean, he was Lars who? Just kidding. the best drummer in the world. <laughs> yeah. He invented oh, the carpet Vinny, roll. Vinny Caliuta. <laughs> you got the best tongue. Yeah. Steve Smith, no fucking Lars. And, uh, <laughs> um, Bobby Jarzenbeck, whatever. No, Lars. Yeah. Lar- <laughs> dude. Dude, dude, Lars and Beck, dude. Stealing that. That one. DVD's <laughs> sick, dude. I, I'm, I'm, that's a physical media that I'm stoked to have is that Bobby Jarzenbeck shit. 
and yeah, and respect res- respect for Lars though for doing that though because I to I an do extent, back it. to an extent yeah. yeah but no one else everyone pushed out and everyone agreed with him everyone pushed out and he he just I mean that's a marketing error <laughs> to <laughs> to a big extent to be like I'm gonna be the one to do it and they're like well you're fucked forever now so well, have fun like, with that. tried to sue his fans so yeah it's not a, and Eric Clapton successfully done <laughs> it too a bunch of people have done it like where it's like <sighs> they find like a broke fan but. Like, Twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> That's a tough oh, move God. to turn on on the fans if you really think yeah, about it. Like, yeah, it just uh, like I feel like Lars had a part of it, right? And yeah, uh-huh. Bobby George my place with George Strait now. He does. I wouldn't yeah. call. It. Yeah, he That's does. It's been a while. Crazy. It's been a while. Oh yeah, for sure. Judas Priest or, or no Halford? Right? Using Halford, using Sebastian Bach. You know, yeah. he was doing all these things. Um, he was in Faith Good Warning. Yeah. Oh, yeah. for a while. Um, Arch Matthäus, uh, the first Arch Matthäus record, is a systematic failure or something like that. It's fantastic. It's some of Bobby's best playing. But yeah, he's playing drums for George Strait now. Get I mean, it, dude. Though. Him and Ron just built themselves up to be these gigantic musicians, and they both are. And yeah. he just was like, hey, I'm going to use it to get paid, dude. Probably Ron has a nicer is- place than me. Ron's still doing <laughs> Watchtower. That's crazy yeah. on its own. Oh, totally. Yeah, dude. Watchtower, Watchtower is even around. I'm so down with that. I want to. Look, I, yeah, I'd like to get a part two with Ron and and yeah. and talk about the Watchtower stuff, dude. Because he, they weren't really do. They had the EP maybe so out awesome, when uh, Concepts of Math. Have it on final. You know, yeah, I right. bought Honey from Rick Koaluka, the drummer. <laughs> Interesting. Of wow. Damn. Nice. What'd you use it in? Did you cook with it? Put it in my cereal. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's what I I make, making them regular flakes, honey flakes, dude. Grape nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Grape nuts with honey. But I mean, for Bobby though, get it, man. I mean, what? He's probably yeah. in his middle late fifties. You know, he's like at least seventy-five. He's at yeah. least yeah, <laughs> he's around there. But like, no, might he's... as well just like still. He wants to play drums for the rest of his life, and like. It's like a great paying gig, and he gets to play huge live shows, and he has to have fun. Yeah, be in the pocket, totally. be in the pocket yeah, he, not have to hit like behind him fucking symbols anymore. <laughs> literally gets to ride off into the sunset. It's pretty goddamn cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Probably, probably owns a house. The spastic recording videos <laughs> are rad, dude. I, I love how he's just like all oh, dude, over, yeah. just you know, he's, he's, yeah, everything yeah. was like oh, the song dude. is called Pepper Cancer. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, that, dude, I love that shit. I got that DVD when it came out or whatever. I was like, and then, of course, now it's on YouTube and all that, you know. Like, yeah, that's such a cool. He's one. rad and school and all those songs on there. So it's Vinny Kelly, you to the best drummer. One, two, oh, yeah. three, go. Question. <laughs> no, is he still? No, he's not. Okay, who's the best? Oh, Lars. Besides Lars. Lars. <laughs> I knew you were gonna go there. <laughs> Besides Lars. Best drummer ever. <laughs> oh man. You guys are fucking crazy. He's the reigning king forever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I usually ask drummers that because I remember uh, hearing the name a bunch and then having to do a bunch of research on him and just being like, holy fuck, and hearing about the thing where he went flew to Japan with like barely any notice and and did that one show where he's smoking a cigarette with uh Lars. with Lars just went out and just jammed with fucking with Chick Corea and stuff and like uh, <laughs> isn't John the one who showed us that on the last time he was on? I for, no. You might have been like the eighties video. You might there was someone? No, it might have been someone either Roddy us. or it was either Roddy or John. Because remember he was like, "Oh, dude, it's definitely this," but he's the best. And I was and I had never really I've heard his name a million times, but hadn't done research. And then I just he asked every good Dave drummer. Level, like what do you mean show? you've heard his name? He plays for Metallica. <laughs> <laughs> I love how this is getting, like, dude. And then I go back. Okay, I'm just gonna let me just lean it the other way and say, then you listen to Injustice for All, and you're like, this man did something, you know. I I, I hear you guys with the. Are you trying to you're trying to switch enough. it on us? Uh, okay, I'm just saying when I go. So now back, we're talking Vinny Caldini when you say Lars. What if what if Lars was on an Aldi Mule album like like Casino or something? <laughs> <laughs> No, y'all, y'all can't compare Vinny Caliuta to Lars, dude. That's yeah, crazy. you can. 
Vinny Caliuta did not play on what? Master of Puppets. He, Vinny did not play on Master of Puppets. He didn't play on Ride the Lightning. He didn't play on Injustice for All. Hell, he didn't play on the Black Album. He didn't play on Lulu. <laughs> okay. I get it, dude. You are, you're not wrong. You are no, not lying. Unforgiven I mean, did not do Unforgiven 3. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> But that's just that's been the uh, anyways. I should probably change it now because we're stuck on the large Why? thing. It's, every time I ask, it's it? gonna be no, large. It's just, no. Sorry, we're Joe. Like tarp. The rest right. of the episode is just about Lars. <laughs> dude. Bring up Lars, you're gonna pull back a bloody stump. <laughs> oh, yeah. no, 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 back to the Napster thing. There's all these people that came in after he did that. And we're like, yeah, fuck yeah. But they were like, no, you go do that real quick. We'll support you later when after like it's blown over. We'll do that. But like. A lot of people lost. I mean, a lot of record labels lost money, which, man. But like, so many bands were like, "Fucking do it, dude! Just go do it. You should yeah. go do it, Lars." And uh, he went out there and did it, and it was pretty insane. But yeah. and now it's just all free, so it's like, yeah. And he wasn't and really everyone did. in this chat room had to remove a virus from their computer from using LimeWire. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, that's why we're DC plus plus, dog. I don't. I didn't get that. Dude. No, I missed okay. that one. I remember, yeah. like, I was back... on. I was on in Pirate Bay. Yeah. Oh, AIDS Bay. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, Virus Bay. I didn't mean to say Virus that. Bay. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um. But no. Yeah. That was still. That's still around and still allowed. And they're still like I don't know. And they still have all these hidden viruses within their zip files to be like yeah just download this it's totally the album dude check it out and like i still get yeah. you with it but um yeah i don't fuck i can't napster is still there what really what yeah. it's a pay for play now probably right 30 days free and then 10.99 per month cancel anytime oh how many people have napster music disc 110 million ads track ads free tra 110 million <laughs> tracks <laughs> ads ad free and it's just got a picture of a cell phone with ads on it. Oh, that's actual music. I'm sorry. I might yeah, do a 30 day for free. It's a streaming service now. Wow. Try it out. Yeah, crazy. I feel like so, so, some investor bought it. it was like, yeah, Lars should buy it. <laughs> Napster. Oh, my God. I get so I can shut it down. So they have uh, stream and lossless audio, listen offline, transfer your library for free. 110 million tracks ad free and official Didn't music. Justin videos. Timberlake by MySpace. Yep, I remember hearing that a while ago. It's still there. Yeah. I've went back and there's my pictures were still Dude, there. We I like gotta revive that shit. I know. We need to go back to dumb so social media. <laughs> <laughs> like it's like we're on smart water now. We need to go back to like fucking like tap water. Yeah. Because like as far as like people are too, they have oh. too much access and things, and it was just like have a little song playing in the background and like oh, those my top friends. And like your comments, you don't get to like go like fucking just interact with a bunch of people. It's like you have to come interact with me, or that's it. There's no there's no news feed. It's just like my little page, you know. And Sean I feel Kelly like... from Dimmock taught me how to put uh, Samus from Metroid jumping around on my MySpace page. <laughs> <laughs> I miss Sean. what's Sean up to? I haven't seen him. We toured with Hey Eternal with when he was in uh, Hey Eternal. It's have you talked the last to him? Lately? Time I saw him. Oh, Angel. No, Chris. no, the, yeah. no. The last time I saw Sean was when I was tracking the drums for Emergence of Reptilian Altars, which is the second Dimmock record I was on. So that was 2010. So last time okay. I saw him. Damn. Mm -hmm. Wonder what he's up to. He is the last I heard, he is jamming with Scott Ruth and Dennis Carroll, who was the bass player for Dimmock before I came in. And as as far as I know, he's just he's just him and Scott are just jamming, and they've got a drummer named Brian who's a friend of mine. He's playing drums for him, and they've just got a project that they're just doing on for themselves. Where wow. where is Sean from? Red Bank. Is it like next to Burbank? Okay. Red Bank, New Jersey. Nice. Nice. All those okay. guys, those those Ripping Corpse guys. So you know, Rattan comes out of there too. Nice. Um, and <clears throat> yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so Same, he's still playing. That's cool. Uh, Red Bank, Red Bank, Red Bank. Uh, Jay and Silent Bob. Mm. Oh, oh, yeah. Red Bank. Nice. So the original Jay and Silent Bob secret stash store with the Blunt Man Chronic Mobile. Nice. Uh, in okay. Red Bank. Nice. As is nice. Sean Kelly. 
Good old Sean Kelly. I love that guy. That guy was fucking awesome to tour with. He was a sweetheart, man. I love that guy. Proto Riffmaster. His playing is everywhere, and people just don't know it. It's crazy. Yeah. The even deeper secret of that band, I guess, is Brandon Thomas, the drummer. And geez, that's just... That guy's like my secret tre treasure trove for like tasty Vinnie Caliuta type, you know, drum licks. Mm -hmm. Nice. He's no Lars, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I'm going to back so, down, dude. So, Joe, I'm back to you. Uh, you're talking about corn or something. something? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 we, we were did. getting back we into were that, at uh, the industry. Yeah. Well, well, the last thing we talked about was Dillinger, I think. Oh, that Dillinger, that's like, right, that's right. Yeah, so yeah. were you playing? Yeah, then, we never really got into when you started playing music, though. I, so like I played instrument. like, uh, yeah, I played guitar since I'm 12. And then okay. like I had a, like a thrash what, metal What band. made you want to play guitar? What did you say? Uh, what made you want? Was it your grandma, you said? Well, yeah, my grandmother helped me like get a lot of music that I was into. We would go to the mall okay. and like buy CDs and tapes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think Guns N' Roses like got me like hooked at that time. Like I was, I liked them since I was like that was like the first band I really like attached to. Nice. And um, yeah, just seeing Slash like play the guitar, I was like, I want to do that. Right. Was she influencing then, you, or she was just like uh, no. someone that would buy you the things? She would just help me like buy the stuff, but she had like a good ear for like certain things, even though she wasn't into the music so much. Like she could like recognize certain things were had like a uh, like some material like depth to the music. It wasn't just like huh. you know pop cool. stuff. Yeah. Or whatever. Mm -hmm. So um, well, and now yeah. now that we're in grandma, I just want to know did you, did she play any kind of her music? Yeah, that she, she, yeah, she played she listen piano. To? Like she always played piano. Like she liked the Beatles and stuff, and you know, like sick. Uh, yeah, that's so, crazy. Yeah. So she introduced in the, you to the Beatles. That's a that's a big one right there. Yeah, in the, I know, in the future I've it's going to really be like into them though. I in, don't the, know. in the future really? it's going to be like my grandma listened. Yeah. My listened to Corn. My grandma listened to Corn. And like that's that's a, that's the future from now. Like we're gonna be like, my, <laughs> yeah. my, my grandma was like listening to like old Corden songs. We already and like, we already know those women. <laughs> they're already there. <laughs> they're they're we already do. coming to our shows. Now, let's they're, already yeah. grandmas. they're already grandmas. <laughs> it's crazy. It's what I mean, we're forty, and and at least I know that I'm a Beatles fan, and I shouldn't be if we're gonna talk about generations being exposed to things. You know, I think we. I think what's is good gets carried through a lot longer than and i love corn but i don't think corn is going to last as long as the beatles yeah i mean yeah. if you freeze if you freeze it you know <laughs> freeze yeah. corn it might at least a <laughs> year you get your lars will though metallica will <laughs> which i actually enjoy you kind of candy corn ever. candy corn candy candy corn, corn. Yeah. you hit me in Apocalypse. that i had a point earlier when we were having the new metal talk and i'm not trying to take it back there again but i'm just <laughs> trying to say that i think that new metal is that thing that you can just freeze for a year and then after that you got to kind of let go of it yeah. it's one of those stepping stone things that it, it charges you just enough to dive into the next pond which is the real shit yeah. and i love yeah. all the new metal stuff that i grew up on i still love and i'll still listen to it but New metal was one of those blips that was, <laughs> yeah. It's got to be it was uh, just what's a, name? a little sorry, stepping sorry. stone. All right. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry that I brought it back. back. It's coming. Oh my god, it is coming back. Like new metal <laughs> is coming. It like apparently is big again. I don't. I don't. Yeah. You see that a not, tour announced not, today? It was corn. It's not hitting Lawrence my Corn and Gorgira. But, right. Oh my yeah. god. Wow. That was like but a that's corn and a huge thing. It's like Gojira, small right below it. Then Who like was it again? Short. I think it was like corn. It got announced today. It was like corn on a humongous poster. Then it was just like Gojira. And then like Lorna Shore. Or Lorna Shore, a band like Lorna Shore or something like that. And I was like, dude, Whoa. Lorna Shore. They were second on the bill on Summer Slaughter in 2014, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And 
yeah, they, they're opening for they, that yeah, tour. They blew up. Crazy. Um, I'm that bad though to me. I'm like, how's that drummer? How's that drummer, John? I always good. like what wondered if it was like that was studio magic. You don't have to answer that, but I I thought it was kind of like a studio thing, but he seems like a kind of I haven't seen him play since then. Mm-hmm. And he was doing some nasty shit on stage, like mm-hmm. as far as I am, as close as I am to you, Casey. Yeah. In in drum watching <laughs> ring. Yeah, yeah, totally. uh, Three thousand miles. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're right there. No, I mean, no, I, yeah, yeah. Binoculars. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't really listen to Lorna Shore, but uh mm-hmm. Are you bringing up the recent stuff that has been floating? Because it's just fucking old dudes being angry at young dudes. Joel, what's what is it? The what? You, is it the kick drum shit you're talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh no, 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 not that. No, just <laughs> uh, just like I just want to know if it was like if it was because it sounds like just perfection on the album. When I've heard it, I'm like, what the you know? And then like, and, well, and Jared from oh, uh, Rivers of Mine was like, that's well, you can fucking do it, dude. And I was like, all right. Well, dude, you, yeah, to I mean, 20 years like that. Yeah. Well, in the last 20, that's just what that death metal kind of sounds like right now. It's, yeah. That's what people want to hear right now is OK. Yeah. The but, sound, um, the sound is what I don't know after. if it'll last. No. But, yeah. I, yeah. I know. This has got to be Chris Mahar, right? <laughs> yeah. This is Chris, Chris Mahar. Mahar. <laughs> yeah, I know. Sitting up in the woods, <laughs> listening to black metal, hating everything. <laughs> All right, let's get back uh, on to Joe again. Working guys. out in his bedroom. Uh, All right, then, so college. When yeah. did you start? When did you start playing with humans, dude? When did you start <laughs> playing with somebody else? In, in high school, I, I had like a thrash death metal band in high school. Like, oh shit, yeah. So and into college and everything. Uh, there was this band called Scorched Earth that was like our oh, yeah, you know, sure. the, and uh, yeah, I did that for like seven years or so. We were together, we played like all different clubs in the city. Um, did you guys put out releases too? Not really, like, we didn't we we didn't get signed anywhere and like we didn't like really figure out how to get like proper like self release like distribution demos, and everything back then. You guys yeah. did some recording, yeah, we had demos and i also had like some other project that i liked a lot at the time which uh which was like this nintendo metal thing mm-hmm. um which would be cool to put out because it was it still sounds pretty unique um i enjoy but, some uh, eight bit yeah yeah that i had problems with that because like i called the project wario's nightmare and it was like an infringement on the yeah nintendo stuff so like when i put it on myspace it was getting like like messed with and everything uh <laughs> i saw casey so, play some 8-bit stuff the next level dude shout out the next level uh what? I'll check All that right. out the, oh no yeah. th- this was like half 8-bit <laughs> stuff and half like grind like the oh, the nice. style and then like then there would be like weird like cover songs like uh i had um like these pop punk covers, but I changed it into like a grind song and everything. So <laughs> it was That's a cool. fun project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Around around that time, I was into like the Locust and uh, I was, you know, the, dude, I knew you. We, no, we know you like the Locust. Are you still talking? <laughs> no, I, I was waiting for it to come up. Here and it comes. Just happened, oh, really? I, you, I, you I was a little clairvoyant stuff. in the Locust. I was like, I think he's going to say that this was one of his influences because. Yeah. Yeah, as a Locust fan, um, yeah. I can definitely see it in the music, you know. Yeah, and and yeah, I was just waiting for it. So, when did you come across that? Did you? Uh, yeah, that was around college time, and then like Oops, when yeah, we would go to the, these shows. It would be the, the Locust, or we'd go see Daughters. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever heard. Sick, of that. Yeah, yeah, of course, sure. dude. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, then. Um, yeah yeah there was this other man and albatross i'm not sure if i would like them today but i remember at the time they would have like the most intense shows like uh, did you come across that in person first yeah that i think that band only had like demo tapes they didn't have like good releases and stuff or the locust uh, or the daughters 
yeah, locusts the, are daughters. Um, did you come across that in person first? I don't remember actually. I, I've seen them live like a bunch of times. I don't remember if I heard them. Because I, I, I always, was, I love the, you know, being introduced to a band in the live setting for oh, the yeah. first time. Yeah. Type deal. Um, I don't know if you have one of those. Like, what's a band that still stuck with you today that you saw live first? There's this weird band that was called Child Abuse. <laughs> That like offends me out of all the court. Yeah. 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 I just remember them because of the electronic hey, stuff. Yeah. So that you know, like with the locust, they had all the Moog synths and everything, and and that sound that was pretty wild. Like this band had, uh, they were opening up for this uh, this like uh, elect electro clash band called Adult. It's like a weird electronic Electro music. Electro Clash. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. So, uh, but they were like uh, this grindy synth band. It was just like synth bass and drums and everything. And they were pretty heavy. Nice. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, that kind of stands out around the same era, I guess. Mm -hmm. You guys are right. Tarantula Hawk? No. Never heard of them. Did you get any other math core type shit? Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. So then the the real big one was uh, Psyopus. Uh, yeah, yeah. They, like, I they're know they're huge for us. I did I got some shows with those guys when I was in the Red Chord for a minute. Oh, nice. Yeah, you were in the Red Chord. Jeez, even in every band. No, I haven't. <laughs> <It's just new. laughs> That's so, awesome, though. I make the, it come back. That's cool. The other guitar player, Chris, and myself are like super into. Uh, Chris Arp, the guitar player from Cyopus, and uh, insane. We uh, he put out this book called Exploding Fingers, and we were like, you know, you it, he just printed it from home and like sold it, you know, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, god, it, it was like these most painful like techniques to just like really uncomfortable stretches. And uh, we like to do a lot of like this uh, touch style, like tapping stuff. Mm -hmm. do, you, uh, do you still have that relic that you speak of oh uh, i don't know yeah, i'm sure it's in like my it's on youtube too, like <laughs> yeah but he's talking about the physical thing right? yeah i'd have yeah. to find it yeah was that song death eye or something where he just did yeah, like he yeah. never used a pick he was just told yeah you're like what the fuck yeah he, he won the guitar center competition yeah, exactly. for like yeah yeah he... for the best guitar player or something we we got like a a lot of stuff where we're not using the pick and then like uh somebody one guy we were jamming with one time made some comment about how like one minute the pick is on the floor then it's like in our mouth and then like <laughs> <laughs> that uh yeah but like we yeah we play a lot of the tapping stuff like there's big sections where there's just kind of no strumming or anything yeah that's actually uh that's john's sick. sending me stuff right now in the in the background so this is yeah, the, yeah that's the exploding fingers right there. Yeah, yeah. That's how I was trying to. Melodic yeah. colors. He, he, yeah. levels, heightened levels of accuracy, dude. This man is uh <laughs> detailed and logical instructions. Isn't it wild, dude? And it's just as a dumb stoner from a beach town, I'm just come across this band called Psyopus. <laughs> I'm in my shorts and sandals at the beach, smoking a joint, and I'm listening to this band, and I'm like, this shit's fucking crazy. And then this guy's got a whole fucking rundown, a book about music and i'm you better like, have a book being that good at guitar it's, like it's yeah, just hitting me in a part of my brain that i just don't want to stop listening dude why did that guy literally is like i'm, I'm surprised that after Cyopus kind of went away that he wasn't one of the more you know like because you think about dillinger their popularity stuff like that they took it kind of to a I, different level i would I think say that band right? was probably too dense for people yeah, yeah it's yeah. too much but i probably. mean like I'm just I'm looking at his YouTube. He's he, the last thing but, he posted was five years ago. It was he, exposed, it was that we were ready for that he's, shit oh, because yeah. Black Market no Activities was just giving us the goods, dude. And oh, and Black, we that was guys label, yeah. yeah, yeah, guy, <laughs> guy really was uh, Officer K. 
he he had that's right uh, <laughs> he's a cop now he had a radar for a lot of stuff that was just hitting me in the right spot at that time in my life dude just we were talking about the new metal thing it just hit me in the right spot at the right animosity time. stuff yeah yeah hmm. dude so many bands from that record label and and the red cord too like it, it was all just yes dude give it all you know and psyopus was one of those things that i dove into and gilbert too you love psyopus and and that was like another thing too i'm like okay mike's into it I, he he gave us dillinger he gave us cynic like he had dead water dreaming right is that was that that yeah that and that was that was cool and this thing, was, he'll know what i'm talking about there was now nah, I just I'm too uh inebriated to uh remember most of the other bands, but I think that every band that I came across uh, that came off of black market activities I I was in, you know, and purchasing the physical copies and still have them today. If I could I could find them in some bins twenty feet from me right now. It'll come back. It'll I my girlfriend just read an article about people buying up dvds again because they're so Whoa. furious with the streaming services and this is something that my vocalist jason was talking about he does a lot of a lot of flipping on uh come on camera on ebay and he goes buy your dvds buy the ones you like because it's gonna go up yeah oh. yeah it's like i a agree dude. Now. <laughs> well there's there's dorks like us and nerds that that are just like us that the stuff that we want to watch isn't on the streaming stuff there's oh, a, a giant they, pile of stuff that i would love things too i guess yeah what do you mean one of the things they're finding is that they like they, she was telling me they, they like they'll they'll change subtle things they'll change music in the background to duck copyright infringements no, they, mm -hmm. they did that with uh, Wayne's World. They changed the uh, they're playing Stairway to Heaven, but it's like not or something like that. Ain't wow. <laughs> Fucking wow! Dang. It's like a different yeah. key or something. Weird. Yeah. yeah, something like that. Yeah, dude, they're uh, creating those fucking um, the crazy. Bernstein Bear shit, dude. They're Bernstein. <laughs> I grew up with the bear with the Bernstein Bears. I didn't too. <laughs> Which one of you? <laughs> did you guys grow up with the Berenstein Bears? No. I, I, I never I said Berenstein in my life, dude. Is that really? straight up? Did, no, I mean, which is the real thing? I might I be making it right Bears, now. dude. What? What is it? Though? I remember it. Allegedly, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's actually Berenstein or something. But we all remember Berenstein or something. We all remember Berenstein. Yeah, but apparently it was Berenstein. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think so. Yeah. It's, it's it, weird. What is that? The <laughs> Mandela effect. That's yeah. what it was, dude. All right. Explain. <laughs> no, we, we got so deep into the weeds, we don't even know how to get out, dude. <laughs> Grab your machetes and fucking start hacking, dude. So Joe was sitting there one night listening to Psyopus going, holy shit. And yeah. That's <laughs> right. Man. Yeah. What else? Oh, the, beneath the massacre, we got into a lot too. Oh, yeah, That's sick. that hitting. That first EP was a, a blast to the face for sure. Yeah, yeah. and uh, stuff after. But I'm just saying, being introduced to that band for the first time is yeah, yeah. Where everyone's just like, "This is fake. This is bullshit. This is not real." I remember like hearing that for the first time, being on the. Yeah. Right. Then you see it. I mean, just... drum wise, I'm not talking about guitars, but with guitar. <laughs> what the fuck are these guys on? Like, what's going yeah. on with this? I, I you know I toured with them. We, Casey, were you on that tour with us? Summer Might Slaughter. Have. Which one? Oh, uh, Beneath the Massacre. I don't remember that. I'm not okay, sure. Yeah. I definitely cool back in, right? I have to cool back in. Yeah, they, they are. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dude. I, I, again, I don't want to take it into the weeds, but this is something that I did want to <laughs> mention tonight, dude. We're talking about Can Canadians, despised icon, dude. I saw something today. Um, one of them needs some help. Uh, uh, the original guitar player, he does sound for them. I think his name's Yannick. He has house burnt down, dude. Oh man! And he's got four kids and a wife, dude, and uh, oh, their shit. whole life just burnt down, dude. So I actually want to. Sorry to. We'll, we'll, we'll put. We'll plug take it, it when you get. Make it, you it a downer. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get. I'll send yeah, it yeah. to you, Joel. I didn't, yeah. I don't mean to make it a downer, but that you just reminded me because we were talking Canada. Mm. All right. Well, my know. grandma just died 
So I'm, sorry, I'm, just <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to double down. But uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, terrible. That's a bad joke. Um, anyways, um, so back to Bernstein Bears. Uh, <laughs> I actually just looked them up, yeah. and that we I for sure had a million of these books. Yeah. That's, there's one called That's So Rude. That's pretty sick. Um, anyways, and Bad Habit. Anyways, that's a offspring song too. But um, so back to so Sai Opus and stuff like that, Chris Arp yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, and go. What else? <laughs> yeah, other than Beneath the Massacre, then like, I don't know. I mean, then we were like really into just, by, by that time we were, I was with Chris, we were playing full on like neurectomy stuff. Like we had, mm -hmm. you know, some pretty wild songs like written already by then. Um, what was the initial goal of the of the, the songs, like writing them? Was it we were like pushing brutal? each other a lot. Like it, we had mm -hmm. the, the last. Both of us came from bands that we like, just felt were like not really like cutting it or like going anywhere and everything. And we just really wanted to do something that was like, uh, like musically more challenging and more you know intense, basically. Um, mm -hmm. So that's how we kind of like got together, and then like when we did get together and like play and write and everything, we would just try to like uh, push things as far as, as far as we could, like, mm -hmm. uh, like, and we would just practice like crazy. I mean, we'd practice like, like friendly competition kind of stuff. Just like try to push things, yeah, like find it, the crazy, it, try to do the crazier it, thing. And yeah. Also just like learning new techniques and like teaching each other and stuff. And then just like practicing mm -hmm. them like crazy. Like we would constantly, aside from like all the Sciapa stuff, we would just like always watch like all these like bet you can't play this videos and stuff. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Didn't that ruin so, Dragon uh, Force? Wasn't that <laughs> like remember Dragon Dragon Force was like they were like at the top of their game and then um Herman Lee did a bet you can't play this. Yeah. And then he just but like slopped it the whole time it. and everyone's <laughs> like, oh I mean they're still out and there was, like, playing. I mean they, they were like they were top, top two. they were like going to the top though. And then they kinda kinda I mean, they're still doing good. They're still in mm -hmm. power metal scene. They're um, killing it. But like, as far as yeah, popular we them metal scene, yeah, they were like in a popular pocket with like you know through that through the fire and flames and yeah. that shit hit and it just was like hitting Billboard whatever. Guitar um, Hero, I think, it like exploded. But once too. guitar, yeah, Guitar Hero, and once people saw that, I think it, they kind of went like, Woo, and then the singer left, and like all this shit happened, and they kind of like revamped. Still, so much fun to watch, like. We got to see them in a tiny ass venue, but uh, mm -hmm. but I remember the bet you can't play this was a big deal when we were younger. Like, oh, well, who, yeah, well, who's next? <laughs> you know, like, um, Chris Broderick and all, all these crazy guys would go in there and do it. But there's there's notable fails that are yeah. uh, I don't want to mention band names, but yeah, there's been a couple. <laughs> yeah, I just text you, Joel. I don't know if you. Got I know, it. I, I got it. I got it. I got it. Um. What else? Yeah. So the so yeah, it was just like lots of like practicing and like just pushing each other more and more like constantly. Um, that's where we got into that whole like tapping thing like crazy. Um, and then yeah, we wrote the, the this the fifth song in the album. It's the album title Zombified, but like that uh, is just like so weird and wild like it, it, it got to the point where like to play it it just had to be like purely like muscle memory couldn't really think about like mm -hmm. what you were playing it just had to be like just uh straight muscle memory and that was kind of it especially because yeah, we sang definitely. too when while we were playing so your song titles are interesting dude because <laughs> my choice yeah. to to add to my story to pump the episode was dolphin and, oh, yeah. and I literally picked Dolphin just because I was like, oh, shit, dude, this is the name of this song. And then it starts and it's 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 named after a, a, a specific sniping spot in CSGO. <laughs> <laughs> Not kidding. I can't take this man seriously. I can't take Long John Stress seriously. Oh, shit. Sure. Fuck. Yeah. I mean, but if you don't, I mean, Joe. I need backup, dude. I need somebody to give me some. I just feel like John's too good at at stupid, like yeah, you know, making me fucking. Chris and I stupid. did have a sniping spot in CS:GO that we called Dolphin. Oh, really? Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and right. at one point in time, he was actually looking on 
we had this we used to shoot like reverb ads for guitars at each other all the time and at one point in time he found a like was it was either a, a, a Tobias or or a Spectre, like a Stuart Spectre design Spectre bass that mm-hmm. had dolphins on the inlays and all that stuff. <laughs> What's CSGO? What is that? What's what? Oh, Counter Strike. Oh, it's, uh, CSGO. Uh, Counter Strike. Yeah, it's yeah. a very toxic uh, first person shooter that <laughs> is I one of the things get... that, that Chris and I used to do together. Yeah, I kind of figured it was a video game, but I was like, I've never heard of a. You know, my kid does yeah, cool. you know, Call of Duty, fucking Fortnite, all that kind of shit. First person shooters, right? Those are all. That's what that is. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. really, really stripped down hardcore. And mine was uh, Medal of Honor PS2. Shout out. Oh, yeah. That was Front Wolfenstein. Line. Sorry. Wolfenstein. That's like the first one ever. That's Anyways, so uh, Metal I, play, I, I play Wii Bowling. <laughs> Wolfenstein is great because you get to kill <laughs> Nazis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember my dad was like going to buy this like three thousand dollar computer when I was a kid, and I was like, "It's got Wolfenstein." Like, yeah, buy it. Wolf. Like, just write a check. Like, the front oh, line was means. killing Nazis too, dude. You, the first level is Storm and Normandy, dude. You're, but Wolfenstein, you're... they all look like cyber trucks. Like everyone's a, they're they're blocked yeah. people. They're <laughs> Anthony. I'm sorry, I wasn't really trying to bust your chops. But back to your question about the song titles. I don't even know what chops you which, were busting, dude. Which is there is a connection with with Dolphin and CS:GO. Yeah. No, I I and that song starts off amazing, dude. With how, I, I I didn't count how many hi hats, but it starts off with a bunch of clothes hi hats, and then just fucking. It's hit you in the out. face dude it's just a yeah. real quick it's a fun song <laughs> yeah. a lot of those songs One, two, three, feel like speed runs like when you used to do like a speed when you were doing like 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 a mario speed run you know mm-hmm. you yeah. have to get yeah, this yeah. much speed for this amount of time to make that jump but not too far to hit your head there yeah and then you have to do this one whatever that little trick is where they are actually able to inch mario ahead of his normal axis on the screen <laughs> mm-hmm. um but that's kind of what playing those songs are like man totally yeah. dude most definitely and and talking about the 8-bit and the nintendo core shit you were talking about earlier it totally makes sense dude it all comes to bear that all right but the uh we, we a lot of those songs though we wrote all these like gross topics and everything like for the lyrics and all that then we were like are we really going to put these lyrics out the way? <laughs> the way did you write them, or did everybody just, contribute? I well, when we were first thinking about like what we were going to write, I I had like these like deep like ideas and stuff at the time, and then like Chris and Santa were like, "No, let's just write something disgusting, and then you know, <laughs> make it a little silly, and and that's it." Like so, then yeah. you know, then we like some stuff we wrote that was like kind of meaningful and interesting and some things are like like just like disgusting stuff or whatever so it's like a mm-hmm. mix throughout the album but we never we never really wrote any lyrics that were like deeply thoughtful or anything like that that's a line too yeah when i ask about the lyrics i'm not hoping that you're gonna say something like oh i got some deep philosophies you know <laughs> It's just fucking yeah. death metal, dude. You can totally yeah, exactly. Just... Yeah, there's a lyric or, or... sheet. There's a lyric sheet in the studio of it's, when yeah. they were tracking vocals, <laughs> and I love this lyric sheet so so much because of all of the lyrics, there's one that just says "ooh," <laughs> and then there's "ah." It's like <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. Well, you could and somebody with a philosophical speak. mind could be like, "Well, they took it back to <laughs> when." cavemen were just beginning to speak to each other and all it was was just sounds you know <laughs> Have a good day Have a good day yeah. um, the the last few songs on the album though they have like uh they ended up having like deeper lyrics and stuff like that like yeah just because we we did like just make all these grunting noises when we were just like working out the songs and stuff like that. So then we were like trying to figure just to get out your like, rhythms. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. 
so then when we were trying to like put like proper lyrics together then then we like put some cooler stuff together uh, like yeah. the, but uh yeah then there's some funny things where i was like whispering the lyrics i was thinking through <laughs> on like Whisper a cell tracks. phone recording <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah 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 so uh yeah i sent the the uh the tracks to chris like to so he would like go through it he thought it was like ridiculous and hilarious <laughs> i do think a lot of death metal fans are comedy fans too and I, I do feel like if you were to like have some sort of a secret release of just the whisper yeah that you know like i do like that kind of like release like i'm just going like ah, Rob, not, like and just like have that be over the album that'd be hilarious and i would yeah. i would pay for that every time but anyway we just do a vocal I digress. Only release <laughs> vocal bands album. yeah bands do the, the instrumental album release. It's just do the vocals the, only release. We'll do the vocal we'll do, and bass the whisper track <laughs> album. The second disc is just whispering all the songs. Yeah, just place oh just God. placeholder first draft vocals. <laughs> the, this guy uh, Dom that works with Christian, uh, he he's okay. been touring with Cryptopsy on bass. He uh, did like this pre production mixing with them, so he had like all our click tracks. And uh, you know, I could actually probably pull that up. Oh shit! The Dude. click tracks I put were like no, a little ridiculous because no. I I wanted to have like good cues and everything, so I threw yeah. in some like Nintendo like. Uh, they were really cool. They there. helped a lot most of the time, but sometimes yeah. it was like, oh god, um, shit. I don't I don't have it on this computer, but yeah, because Dom wants to release a click track version. <laughs> yeah, that would be funny. <laughs> that we could actually do we could just dump that out on the on the just just clicks and vocals talk about uh eight bit my uh igor dude with george fisher that oh, is yeah. a cool death metal eight bit crossover song oh that's i right. never that's knew right. that happened that's at the end of uh of that really not the newest movie. album but the, the second the last one they put out uh, okay, there's, okay. A, there's a corpse grinder song and it starts out the most brutal fucking death metal song with corpse grinder on vocals and you're just like fuck yeah and then halfway through it, it just turns into an 8-bit song with <laughs> corpse grinder still being corpse grinder and <laughs> it's amazing dude it still works for me it's just it's the same song just translated through a different, you know, filter. It's a funny the- idea. Igor's got some, re- I mean, that dude's got some insane ideas that are just funny to put, yeah. to put on recording. I'm like, yeah. and, and also, you know, brilliant in like a Very. lot of ways, but, but, uh, also just, just bananas. It's like fucking, who's the first singer of, uh, Pink Floyd, just kind of a psycho, kind of just, but like, but it makes sense, and he's got Sid, the idea down. Sid Barrett, Sid, like a Sid, Sid Barrett-y yeah. fucking death metal dude that wants to like try all this weird shit and ends up in this insane sound. But like, uh, no, it's it's definitely pushing the boundaries of fucking of music, and that's that's something like you said, like John was like, oh, it's all the music's about like like certain beats now and speed and and you know a lot of the death metal and stuff, but like to see a band go like, oh, let's just do fucking nintendo noises and throw that in there that's really cool you guys are even fucking with that it's, it's really cool to kind of mix it up a little bit well, i mm-hmm. think we're just it's it's our influences you know because like that's like i like the term i i forget who it was I think it was uh adam from or aaron from calidaris he's like this sounds like early 2000s myspace fuck you metal <laughs> and I have never forgotten. I thought that was wonderful, but because there was so many bands that were just that's kind of when the whole just super extreme metal movement was at its like peak. Like that's mm-hmm. everything was at its fastest and it I mean it's it's still going, but it's a little more I think a little more digitized sounding in my opinion. Like no. It was also new then, so it was like, Ooh, what the fuck? And so we're just kind of that, I guess. Um, well, it was, <laughs> I think it was just built up to like per- everybody's trying to be so perfect that they finally found a way to make it so, so perfect. Yeah. Ours and now we're like, oh, perfect. Eh, it's too perfect. We got that 
um what is it the the uncanny valley we're getting too close to uh artificial version of ourselves mm. uh, yeah and and we're and now we're like ah i want the human aspect of music again you know so osdm reemerges yeah OSDM, uh, okay yeah no i'm not i'm 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 saying that that that's what it is i think that is us saying oh that digitized sound is too unhuman we need to humanize it again mm. yeah that, i don't know we, we didn't get into the that stuff like the i remember we were starting to listen to like rings of saturn a little bit like but uh it just didn't really like it it, it didn't sound right i don't know it was like that uncanny kind of thing a little too clean uh, yeah and then um yeah, there were. I mean, we did like. Uh, you guys remember Paramia? They had like that really cool. Uh, EP oh yeah, that they put out back in the day. They recorded with Zach. With Zach Oren. Yeah, that. I mean, that sound was like wildly tight. Like the guitars and everything sounded like uh, surreal. It was like very cool at the time. Was um, that the guy that had that hu like humongous bass? Yeah, the guitar, bass like... player that played at the time. He was like, yeah, he had like a ten string bass or something. Yeah, it, yeah, exactly. It looked like a war guitar, but it wasn't. I think it was a just a gigantic bass. Yeah, exactly. And he has that one, like that one video that was like popular back in the day on YouTube of him going like Roo -roo -roo -roo. he was like doing the sweep yeah. thing at Zach's, and I was like, fucking yeah. See, John was a stall. Fuck that. It was too crazy for me. He just left, dude. But uh <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But um, no, that definitely was a. Uh, I remember that being like in that old tech, like a uh, 2006, seven, eight era, right? That kind of came out around there. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. One of those like passed around videos where it's like, what the fuck is this guy doing? You know? Yeah. That I'm not into the higher register stuff on the bass. I like the just like a five string. The bass of the bass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <'Cause laughs> I, when we never really had a bass player, we've had like people like on and off try to play. Uh, mm -hmm. Vaughn, Vaughn played with us for like a little bit, just for like a couple sessions to see if that was going to take or not. And then, uh, you know, Vaughn, uh, defeated. Guys, yeah, yeah. Is yeah, it, yeah. We, he's in the same room as us at the. At the oh, that's studio right. That's place. right. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Vaughn um, just posted a picture of him and John recently. Yeah. <laughs> like twenty yeah, minutes cool. ago, I remember. Yeah. Uh, but um, like at first we were going to try to get a seven-string bass and try to match things note for note, and then like that uh, it didn't really work out. Like it, it wasn't. It didn't sound right. Like to just do that. Uh, high register stuff it was like you're missing bass where you need it you know so um yeah it was that interesting to try to like yeah put to write like proper bass tracks for all that stuff did you ever cool. get a seven string bass or an eight string bass i had a six string bass but okay. i don't i didn't like it that much yeah. like yeah i was just saying before i think that, i remember you bringing the six string by yeah the high register stuff it just it just didn't really sound cool so like i rewrote it so it was just like uh an octave or a few octaves lower mm -hmm. to stay like heavy and everything i back that mm -hmm. i mean and I, I do love you know like jeff hugel and stuff when he does you know does this little little bloop, 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 and it's like a cool uh -huh. it's it's cool to listen to and cool to see but like i think for death metal in general it just needs that low end needs to be like it's the it's kind of just like that that heaviness that's the heaviness it's not it's kind of know your fucking role on the fucker yeah. <laughs> with bass players yeah. with, with death metal. It's a little bit know your fucking role. You're supposed to make it heavy. Don't like, don't solo. Like, come on. Like, I need to. It's it's kind of been where I'm at with death metal and in, in, in particular, but with a lot of other genre, genres, I and I love it. But it's sometimes with death metal, I'm like, all right, just so be heavy. Sure. Yeah, before oh before Jesus, <sighs> terrible. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, so uh, oh, Pavel. You know, one day we're <laughs> no, gonna I don't. Have, yeah. You're gonna have a one on one with Rainier, and you're gonna. Wasn't that like a, a short scale six, like a tiny pass like all your thing? sins? I think, I think it was, yeah. I think like it was a, a it was one of those short like scale, yeah. It wasn't a real bass, it's so rare, yeah, yeah. and it was just like the bass was just way out front. Yeah, it's going like, blue, blue. Yeah, 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 I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, pull yeah. Rainier out of the, 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 the dirt and the, 
Well, he did All vocals for Best Man too, right? Best, I know. Vocals That's for what I'm saying. Man. I'm gonna pull him out and I'm gonna yep. put you yep. face to face with him, dude. And you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to confess about well, it's been everything. An inside joke for like 20 years, and I saw how I mad know. you got but it, and I just poked at one it for day. 20 years. So I, I, I keep yeah, I, 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 I talk to him. I I talk to him periodically, dude, and I still I still dude. say, hey, dude, I want to I'm gonna pull you back out for an. I'm gonna be like stick to like, vocals politely declines but he, we still talk and kidding. one day he's gonna say yes dude and i'm gonna say joel you gotta be fucking ready dude he's coming now i'll be like oh, right. I'm, I'm sick i'm just kidding fucking pat war that's hysterical dude that's yeah it's, great. i don't know joel's crazy but dude his, his vocals, <laughs> i mean it's it's dude. very kind of it's not too far removed from what we do it is. Yeah, it's great. Not only that. Okay. Funny part. Um, no, yeah. but the thing it's is, so, better than me. But the thing is, his vocals in, in Bethlehem like are in like the, great, the greatest vocals, the craziest black it metal. Is or so like, yeah. strange and awesome because yeah, they sing all it's in heroin German, black metal. Right? Yeah, it's what <laughs> heroin black? It's like heroin well, they, and they got like they're like shooting up on their cover. They're sh all shooting up. He on their didn't. Cover. He didn't. No, he look at the cover again. He didn't. Guy, right? Oh, so he's exempt. He's he's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just got to talk about people who created things. They created dark metal, dude. No, this came from a big uh, thing with our friend Josh Seitman that would like, you know, he would show you something and, and he was like the one that showed us all of our music. He worked at a record store, would come home and like, check this fucking thing. You know, he was the first one to show us everything. All of it. Don't he give him all that credit. Before, Love you. Before. Hey. And then, um, uh, and then he was like, "This is the sickest thing." And there, and and then everyone's like, "It's the sickest thing." I was like, "It's not that sick." And I was like, "What?" And I, I just kept feeding them, just the the like, "Yeah, it's not that good." And just watching their reactions, and it was just like, like oh, "Yo, bro, know. it's not Pavor. <laughs> it's not like a Thea a flame." <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You're just that's like that's crazy. It was like a slight <laughs> Joel's like, oh, it's not my preference, but all the rest of us were like, it's amazing. What? Like, fuck you. Everybody yeah. was tripping like, on Nile. It, 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 you just said Ly Lythia Flame. Like that Athea was Flame, another, yeah. That was it, another Egyptian. It's like if Cryptopsy and Nile had a really good time one night. Hmm. <laughs> you know. What? I've never heard this. Oh, dude. Casey. Like, like Athea you've Flame, never heard that Elvin one? Friss. Oh geez, nothing, nothing okay, like it. I already have too many bands. I, I can't take it. <laughs> no, no, this one, this one that you needs to go cool. move. Yeah, you got to end this one. Of it will list. change you. I'm just yes, you need yeah, a Really fucking good, dude. I have a Lycothea a flame for patch for my battle <laughs> yeah. vest, and I'm, I don't have a battle vest. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a patch. <laughs> yeah, I have a defeated sanity patch, and I don't have a vest either, dude. Oh, I was just hanging with Vaughn. He played some of that stuff for me. Yeah, I know. We were just talking about him. Shout out Vaughn, dude. He's, uh, he's. How is it? How, what, so you forget the album? appearances on the show now? Huh? <laughs> What did you say, Joel? <laughs> I said Bond's got three appearances on the show, but Joel was saying something to John. And oh, I was asking got... now, John, did you get a chance to hear the new, the oh, Colin uh, Defeated Sanity, Colin recorded Defeated Sanity album? Oh. Wait, what? Didn't the... they just record? Yeah, they yeah, did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they recorded with Colin. You, you know yeah. that, right? John Colin, Martin, Colin. Right? Colin. Yeah. You said, I thought you said Cohen, like Alex no. Cohen. No. Um, the Cohen Brothers, no, heard... Cohen Brothers. I heard a little pinch of it in the car tonight. Sounds really good. Yeah. Oh, sick. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Oh, it's definitely going to sound good amazing. Good rock and roll. Definitely. Good rock and roll, dude. That's, that's, that's what I want to rock and roll. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Solid country gold. Um, so we were <laughs> we were talking about uh, Mario earlier. This, I just need to show this to you guys, and I want to see if you I laugh I still like to fuck my kids up in uh, Mario Whoa, Kart. Whoa, you're oh. kind of gone terribly <laughs> if you didn't fucking finish that correct. I, I, I was just going to say, fuck my kids up. I still love to fuck my kids up, period. Okay, so it's Arnold Mario. I can't skip. It's a real. Who had? Who had? Who had? 
right, that's my oh god but that's not as good it's that's not as good like, as uh it's kind of like when gandalf speaks more to her speech and in lavender pisses everybody it's, off. it's not as good as uh what was it uh home and the tim allen doom yeah, yeah it's that one's doom. fucking so like, sick so, uh, 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 nothing <laughs> Nothing really beats the the aha with the vocals like a half step flat. <laughs> it's just it's such a subtle thing because the song starts off like normal and everybody wants to get all excited and feel good and do things because the victory song is on and then the vocals come in <laughs> and they're half step off. <laughs> What's weird is that oh Schwarzenegger is going to be known for his uh, his. <laughs> before anything else dude he's yeah, gonna be known about that no uh, i mean you, you terminator 2 is like one of those movies get to the chopper yeah he'll probably did get... have you guys seen terminator 1.5 no what, no. what is this i watched what the other night so I've seen it before but I did when I realized the other night I was like oh this is terminator 1.5 it's great raw deal dude it's right oh. in between Terminator One and Two. Is it and, chronologically in between though? Like uh, when it was yeah. put out? I mean, it's yeah. like two I actually gotta go back and watch that. I haven't seen that since Dude, I was like six. I it's think. like Scarface meets Terminator. It's like the craziest shit ever. And he's like, this is the official guns, like, release. It's after. It's two years. I think it was released in eighty six. I think I, or after. It was like, a like, real I, release, not unlike I googled it. Nothing. Raw Deal, Deal is the movie. Dude, it's a, it's uh, a full on Terminator movie. 2. Oh, okay. oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. No, Raw Deal, Raw Deal is, like, is Terminator 1.5. It's right after. And, uh, dude, it's uh, got like a uh, bunch right of Commando? dudes. Or right after oh, I don't even know. That. That's a good point. But it's it's around. Yeah. But basically, it's, 86. it's, it's yeah. right after fucking. Because uh, Commando is like totally. You know what I mean? Like Terminator is like. I don't know. It's, I mean, it's not like Terminator, Terminator. I'm just kind of joking. But there's like. But, oh, but, okay, but so which just seems with him like. So Running gun. The machine gun was like, like just like, it's exactly like Terminator One. Like it was like a couple years. It must have been filmed like uh, a year or two later. But dude, there's all the Scarface guys. Like this, it's all like it's like <laughs> it's like the the dudes like in Colombia and all these guys. It's like Scarface meets like oh, Terminator. Dude. It's hilarious. Like it's actually, I was like, this is a great movie. It's pretty funny. Anyways, I got to go back and watch Raw Deal. That's yeah. Me. Good mention. That's crazy though. You just pitched it as part of the Terminator. Is he gonna uh, do I'm is, a franchise? <laughs> is he gonna do King Conan? Like, is that gonna again? Happen? New one? No, is he gonna like? I don't know. Second part. This might be a Paul Ryan joint, man, because he's mm. he's the Conan aficionado. Oh. But uh, <laughs> but like he was supposed to do the final Conan movie, like when Conan is actually like, I don't know. Like, huh. Oh, it'd be sick. Shit. I mean, State Farm agent. <laughs> you see that? What's Wait. That? Oh, that yeah. We now just, like, State Farm? Can't say oh, neighborhood or something. So neighborhood. Uh, he's like a word he couldn't say, and they just kept like. Uh, it, was, it was like a. It was a, a Super Bowl commercial. Right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, State Farm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. He was on. He was on a. Was it Stephen Colbert or? I think he was on Stephen Colbert recently. It was pretty funny. Yeah, he was on Colbert talking about it. I, yeah. And, uh, yeah, Paul. I think Paul was talking about it because uh, we were on tour during the Super Bowl, and we were oh. in Canada. We were in Toronto, and it was so funny because, like, we played. The bus pulls up, it sits next to the venue, and then on the other side of the bus is a bar, and I just. Happened to step out, and there's like a chalkboard there, and it says tonight American Super Bowl Chiefs versus Buff 49ers. Buffalo. No, 49ers. 49ers. And and like, oh damn. So we're all rooting for the Chiefs, of course. Same. And I got off the stage and you know, did the there was no shower at the venue, so because you guys need these details, you know, use the dude wipes and <laughs> suit yeah, up dude. into some half clean clothes and go over to the bar and order a sandwich and beer and watch the fucking super bowl win are you not pretty are you weird. not a sports game are you nah, not, a, a sports not really game? okay i'm okay. happy when i'm happy when my teams are at the top and everybody in my hometown is happy yeah you know 
Yeah, I'm with you, dude. I, I just like to party, and Super Bowl is <laughs> an excuse to party. party. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it really is. I mean, some it, people it, take it like a little bit seriously, and it's like you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. But you know, yeah, no, sure. <laughs> nah, <laughs> nah, fuck, fuck Joel's way of looking I'm like, at this. I'm thing. aggressive with it. No, if if uh, it, it, even if my team isn't in there, I just want to party with people. You know, Joel, did you? <laughs> so if we're gonna, you didn't. You didn't we're gonna for the 49ers, were you? No, no, no. I we, was we about, against so, the Chiefs. I definitely take the 49ers. He does, dude, you don't get a say because you don't give a fuck. Um, I'm a gnarly Kansas City Chiefs fan. I'm, I'm a gnarly Kansas City Chiefs fan. I like fly out to Kansas City like every year. Oh, and watch a game no there. way. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I gotta hook you up. Like I gotta hook you up. Hundreds with the, uh, of dollars. With Clint? 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 No, I was gonna say the Troglodyte uh, crew, man, because those are the guys that you want to watch. Fo- you want to watch football with Gary and Wilson, because they'll okay, barbecue okay. everything, and you know it's a great. No, I've met up with James King and done the whole Jimbo, Jimbo and James King thing before, and I've seen those was... guys in ages. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Were they in the Tufts well, at that point? Yep, definitely. Tufts. Yep, but it was funny actually. I showed up. My dad was because my dad lives in another state. And we we met there. And we flew out. We fly out to like because he's got he got me into football. So I'm like, fuck you, you have to go with me to these games now because you got me into this shit. And I'm like obsessed now. So um, I was like, my friend James and Jimbo are down there. Let's go. Like at six in the morning, and we go there, and they're in wheelchairs in the fucking. They're like everyone's got a wheelchair at their camp, and they're just all wet, like hammered, like just just drive in the fucking the where you tailgate, and just everyone's got wheelchairs, okay. and you. And you just go and like fucking weird. And, use wheelchairs. <laughs> and I was like, weird. this is actually a good idea. Dude. Go like, they're like old shitty ones. They're like old shitty ones that no one needs to use that actually has a disability. But like just hammered people in wheelchairs. Like it was one of the funnier <laughs> things I've ever done. But um, you know, those guys. It sounds like Kansas. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, Missouri. 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 Yeah. Missouri okay. Um, I like to party, but I don't like to walk, dude. <laughs> yeah. I know when not to watch football because I'll look at my mom's Facebook and I'll look at uh, Rob, the Origins engineer. I'll look at uh-huh. those two guys's and I'll just see them being very unhappy. <laughs> like, and yeah, KC fans are emotional. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All, all football fans are emotional. Right. Yeah, I think that yeah, what we were talking about our teams, you know, I can I could get um fired up for a Niner game, you know, if the right uh, it, Come on now. I'm not just laughing at you, I'm laughing at it. Oh, okay. Um but just the <coughs> feeling of of being around people who are you know, into whatever, and you're just feeling that energy. You're like, fuck yeah, dude, we got beers, we got good food, everybody's having a good time, we're watching some bullshit. <laughs> I watched this uh, Super Bowl, and, and when it's done, we turn it off. Oh, well, shit, we grow- This doesn't go that easy for a lot of people, though. <laughs> just- I was going to say, <laughs> gr- growing up in San Diego, though, it was, like, hard to be emotional for the Chargers, like, personally. I don't know if that pisses anybody <laughs> off. I don't really care. But like, man, you know, and it was like that one time they went to the Super Bowl, and then the 49ers just fucking creamed them, yeah, murdered them, and it's just like fuck, like the Chargers, and there's just been so many like internal ridiculous bullshit things. Oh, by the way, it's like, well, now when I watch is- football, I, I want good food and I want good drink, and when I watch Suffo, I just I fucking get into <laughs> I want it. Want good dude. food and want good drink. Yeah, but- no, I don't have time for the food or the drink. I'm in. <laughs> You know, well, the football thing I'm is emb- it's how much I'm into it is embarrassing, but it also like it's from childhood. Like I've always known this. So I'm like, yeah. And I've always had like times where I'm like, life sucks. Oh, I root for a team. Yay. And it's mm. like it's always kind of like brought me kind of. And so I don't expect anyone to give a shit like at all. And I don't like when people go, you know, I'm, I'm in San Francisco. I live in like not San Francisco, but like I live, you know, within two hours of there. So they're like, you're not a Niners fan. What the fuck? And I'm like, dude. I don't, I don't want to talk about this. Like I, I find happiness through this stupid thing. Like it's like it's like a yeah. it's like a dude that's like way into wrestling or WWE or something. I'm like I won't. I'll maybe in my head make fun of you a little bit, but I'll, I'll be like fuck yeah, it makes you happy. That's that's cool. You know that's it's tight. But uh, no, it does. It's just exciting for for me, and a lot of people don't share it. And I'm like whatever. I'll just you know, I'll be I'll be my, myself and just be like fucking. It's like music. It's like death metal. It's like explaining 
fucking cannibal corpse to a 70 year old he's like oh it's like me and joe (laughs) telling our friends we like the locust and everybody's like fuck you dude that shit i didn't say fuck you we just know i just know you're i know your spiel with the locust sometimes I'm like, no, oh, you said a key I, word. I, I just gonna run off on this dude. perfectly. You're just like, I, I don't care if any what everybody thinks. You know, well, no. that's what but I if you say the Chiefs, I'm like, not gonna be like, dude, I've been Chiefs fan since man, like, the bastard, Gorbachev, nosebleed. Dude, you're talking about all like, those bands that you guys would fucking give me shit about. No, no, no. What I'm saying is that if you say the Chiefs, I'm not gonna be like, dude, since 1994, I've been a big, big fan, and I've like liked them oh. since Joe Montana got there. Blah, blah. <laughs> that's, that's where. <laughs> I, I don't Joe take Montana the bait. Years. I was it's Montana. Montana that, is that's the what, whole that's what got, core I, of Joel yeah. shit. Yeah, when I was a kid, I used, my dad would take me and watch Montana play and for the 49ers, and then they traded him like a piece of shit oh. to the Chiefs, and then I followed him, and I was like, fuck the Niners forever. And my dad was a yeah. Cowboys fan, and he's all, fuck the Niners forever. <laughs> and so I was like in this household of fuck the Niners along with that after my dad was like, fuck yeah, dude, I got him off the Niners. Because <laughs> <Like, laughs> Cowboys fans do not like the Niners fans. So he was like, he brought yeah. me to, I got to watch some sick games as like a fucking first grader, you know, like watching like Montana, like practice right, like from like five feet in front of me. And I'm just like, what the fuck? You know, the and Cowboys so Niners ever- rivalry was big in the nineties. Is it still like that today? Yeah. Yeah. People like get hurt. <laughs> just those together. two teams well, specifically. The Chiefs won the Super Bowl and people got hurt. Yeah. 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 I know. <laughs> Now, now we're the Patriots. We're the new Patriots. So we have Tom Brady. It's like people just hate. I mean, I've noticed that in all sports, when a team yeah, wins, Andy Reed times and, they're like Andy Reid and Mahomes. Yeah, people are just like, "Fuck that, that team! They they're cheating. They're cheating." Well, Especially isn't, like with this new isn't uh, isn't Taylor supposed to do something, say something about the president, and then the Chiefs are. Yeah, see, chill yeah. to the deep state, and <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, we went like three. T- we went to the Super Bowl three times before that happened. That was like okay. <laughs> like, now, now she's coming in. Ouch! Yeah, yeah. A piece of that pipe. Yeah, yeah. My no, but it's it, now. Taylor yeah, yeah, it's the, the Chiefs. Tay Tay is the Chiefs. She's the new Tay-tay. coach, like in the big puffy like jacket. She's like hey. she. No, she wouldn't. Yeah, she could. You guys should do an eight bit nerectomy. Fucking yeah. Taylor Swift collab, bro. Yeah, that'll be funny. Bra- I'm gonna just hide the bushes yeah. here. <laughs> Post on music life at all right. No, you guys are fucking starting to lean it in too hard on Taylor Swift. I was just trying to bring it back. Come on, guys. Oh, Troy's up in there. What up, dude? All right. Oh, hey, right. Troy. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Trey. Let's go. Is it Troy, still uh, snowing? It's west. still probably he's still yeah, like, digging right now? through we're, the snow. He's like Montana. in northern Alaska, which he's might have been in Montana. Yeah, he's like in snow <laughs> forever. Big sky country. He's in a that guy's in Alaska, actually. Or, no, or, he's in Montana. Oh, oh, Montana. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's with, like wish.com Alaska. Uh, Troy, <laughs> uh Troy drummer of Severed Savior and yeah. many other projects. Uh, Cool. My, yeah. my brother for a long time uh tomorrow's gonna be a, a special day let's just say that for both me and troy uh that's all i'm gonna give to you actually oh when, it's gonna be a, yeah yeah um, you're, gonna, you're gonna announce something oh, there's what, gonna, i'm what? not gonna announce anything but there's What's gonna coming? be some some special hey, stuff she, Dude, there's yeah we're live right now watching. maybe what are you gonna announce New carnivorous. I'm not going to announce anything. I'm just saying, look out Friday, which is tomorrow. I'm <laughs> announcing that there's going to be an announcement. <laughs> oh, one of the. Isn't that funny with death metal? It's just like, dude, I can't, I can't say anything about this. I can't say anything. It's all. It's all. It's new album. It's like, dude, I'm announcing. Like I knew it was it's just there. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's coming. I know. No, we got. We got. Some fun stuff's gonna. Your old Mike Gilbert joined Cannibal Corpse now after Sick. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. No, we're 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 harnessing him back, and we're gonna, we're going to bring him back into the severed yeah. savior realm, and uh, I know what you're a little doing. more active. Yeah, we already know what you're talking about now. It's already yeah. out of the bag. So buy so new flip flops. <laughs> we're going to go buy new flip flops together. That's what Troy says. Something yeah. big, big things. things coming, dude. You ain't we're, ready, bro. We're going for you're, you're, you're not ready for what's dude. coming, dude. You ain't ready, ready for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. It's like we already know, dude. Just what's the album name? 
Sorry. Um, you haven't told me. The album name it. and who's playing drums. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who's singing? Who's playing drums? Who's singing? Who's um, playing drums? Yeah. Dude. No, we're just going flip flop shopping. That's it, dude. I love that. This idea, is a deep cut. For sure. That's all. Like if someone's got. this deep, this um, if, I, they if somebody no. did a DVD having the behind scenes thing where we just go flip flop shopping, dude, how sick would that be, dude? Yeah. I don't know if it'd be sick, but it would be funny. <laughs> Fuck you, dude. No, I'm just joking. Oh my god. Whoa. <laughs> He's a I said I'm joking Abigail. right after, dude. Come on, guys. That, that, All right. that solves everything. Get off of me again. Let's go back to Joe. Come on. So Necrophages, right. you listen to next? Oh, that album blew everybody away. Uh, god dang. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah, we were into necrophages for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I never got the <laughs> like point counterpoint <laughs> like writing style down like properly though. The, the, yeah. The no, if, I, I'm I'm deaf in one ear, so the first time, I mean, I was after I got like gnarly tinnitus, so I remember putting in my earplugs or ear earpods for the first time, listening yeah. to Necrophages, and I'm like, what the fuck is? It sounds so different with one side, only one side. Like it sounds like yeah. there's they're they're fighting each it's other constantly. Album, the counterpoint. Man. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's very cool to see what they do with like both guitars. Yeah, definitely, it's wild. Cool stuff. Yeah, At work, I listen one ear, and that's Didn't, where I you on that, that tour, John. You were on that tour with us, right? With Necrophages, was that ne the Necrophages one with uh, Summer Slaughter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was right after. Yeah, we had we toured with them in Europe in 2006, I think, and with Misery Index, mm -hmm. and then we hit Summer Slaughter with you guys because um, they had Remain in the band back then at, at that point, right? That's right. Yep. No. Okay. Yeah. Because there was the other, because then the tour after the, the tour before that, because I remember, oh my God, okay. So <laughs> the first tour we did in Europe was Hannes's last tour, and he wasn't even supposed to be on it, but the guy that they had couldn't hack it, so they brought Hannes back for one more tour. And, you know, you could, Hannes, he, Hannes is great, but he wasn't enjoying that tour. Anyway, so at the end of the tour, Muhammad's like, wait till you see who I got. I'm like, okay, cool, like, whatever. <laughs> and it ended up being Marco Miniman, and that was interesting. Oh, and then, that one. And yeah. then when we went out, yeah, they had Remain. Necrophages did like two or three summer slaughters in a row. Something, Something like, like that. that. That's fucking crazy. I think the, I think the yeah. one that we were on with you guys was the summer slaughter. Yeah. They played they played a, a new Dawn and Demise. They played their one new song. 2008? Well, that's, it was a seven string song. Yeah, yeah, seven string song, uh, Dawn and Demise. Remember that? Like yeah. every night, I'd watch it and be like, "Fuck yeah, it's sick!" But like, like we have a new album coming, <laughs> and just like, just <laughs> don't try to bring it back to Arnold, dude. That's exactly how Muhammad talks, dude. <laughs> no, he. I remember actually. Remember, there was a time actually. We all it was on that tour. That song is uh, we, were, <laughs> we were all like warming up. We were, all, we, were all, we were doing a sound check, and Muhammad uh, comes come out on. with this like his fucking like video camera, and he's like filming us do a sound check, and I'm like, "What the fuck?" He's all. I'm getting ideas from the new album. <laughs> I was like, what the I'm all dude, let get the fuck out of here. Well, I'm like, I'm already He's a like character, man. I, he I, is. I, I ran into him in like 2017, I think. Oh, shit. At uh full terror assault. No, not full terror assault. Um what's the one in check? Brutal assault. A brutal assault, yeah. Brutal assault. And he had a beard and long hair. And I'm like, what are you doing? And he goes, Oh, I'm just a <laughs> I'm just an engineer. I I work in a BMW? cubicle in Hanover. That's ridiculous. Uh, okay. <laughs> That's what you do? You just work in yeah. He goes, I'm like, music? And he's like, eh. you know, that's uh, I heard that they have like the like pretty much the whole album recorded on like a fucking hard drive. And he's just like, eh, I don't give a shit. It's sitting there somewhere in a hard drive, and the hard drive is not going to be compatible with modern computers <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> by the time they want to release I mean, it. Uh, that, I mean, that's saddening <laughs> for us, but I mean, he's the artist, dude. If he doesn't, is it still BMW? Because just... remember, he was telling me that it was the eighties. Either Mercedes, Mercedes? Or BMW. everybody's got their own story, dude. It's there's crazy. a dude, no, that went on. By the way, now that you said that, I mean, if you actually knew what it was exactly, but there's a dude that like went to the headquarters in Germany. Of or like where the engineers are at BMW, 
and was interviewing people like where's muhammad where's muhammad find <laughs> and muhammad like, for me <laughs> i swear to god and, and like they were like and then like security came and just like kicked him off like aggressively whoa <laughs> he's like he's it's like hilarious maybe Go it's to like bmw headquarters and take down muhammad for the dude. new maybe maybe spread, that's just his friend he's like it's on my maybe phone it's on a usb wow. in my pocket you can just have it maybe but the no, cars uh, thing is just a front and he's actually like working with some real shit dude <laughs> what if you find out that he's like or he's just not into social media and he wants to not do music well, yeah no, i imagine he's got a wife and a kid and a dog and a nice house and a job and he's enjoying his day why are you guys making it boring <laughs> dude why can't we just talk about muhammad and aliens right now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> have you guys nice. done dmt <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was a good one. Uh, uh, do do you like, can't he make just like squeeze in like like thirty minutes hour a day just to kind of <laughs> to get to like, <laughs> you know just do some you know come on man it's like throw that on a little like have a little side computer. I remember being when Origin was still on Relapse Records and we were, um, yeah, and the guy we were the guy we were talking to then he was like, well we're the the necrophages record at that point i believe it had been turned in or it was about to be turned in but at that point in time it was finished and then i think something went down between necrophages and relapse records and i think oh, that's well. and that's all i know but i do know yeah. that at one point in time it was finished and it was like we're going to put you out with necrophages next year and we were like okay um but I remember specifically saying that it's going to hit the ground running because they were yeah. really excited for that album to come out. And well, here we are. Totally, uh, dude. Well, do you think it's it'll, just, next year? it'll just now <laughs> there's a new Neurectomy album? Yeah. So, oh. Also starts with an N. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It has sweeps, it has blast beats. <laughs> I mean, there's songs about cutting people open, I think. I don't know what there is. Yeah. <laughs> um, Pulling nerves out, maybe in the ankle, maybe in the armpit. It could be anywhere, dude, because kind of sounds like you missed is... the seed too. What's that? <laughs> so it it kind of sounds, sounds like, like human centipede too. too. <laughs> human centipede too. But now that I know that oh, God, me is just removing the nerve, dude, I, I got nerves all over my body. I now have been thinking about multiple places that nerves could be taken from <laughs> maybe from a man it. maybe from a manscaped maybe from not you know, wow. you know. Like Anthony, you know? i feel like we've gone for full circle this is good yeah yeah <laughs> so what would be like the gnarliest nerve to remove like the neural like i guess like your yeah, spinal know, man. So, yeah is, is is that like the main shit the main Plug is in your neck. But you remove oh. the spinal cord. <laughs> that <laughs> yeah, that's, so the spinal cord is what sends all that shit out to your body, right? I think it's vaguely related, yeah. Yeah. I, I, hang on one second. I got something I, cool I can show you guys on this thing. All right, it's, let's uh, do it. All right, nice. Is it a framed picture of what's no, the just got the framed nerve, removing... man? I'm gonna be really angry at him. <laughs> Peter God damn it, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> that's so that so um this is my next tattoo this we got this artwork done that was inspired by this thing in uh this medical museum in london i yeah, forget the, the name of the place but they have like a museum of like all medical oddities and stuff and yeah. uh if you google it you'll see like the in like the early medicine when they were studying the body they like extracted every nerve like in the whole body and put them on these huge like wood boards Wow, and they haven't preserved in the museums. So, like, if you go to the museum, you'll see like uh, it looks kind of similar to this. Like, I mean, not with like okay. the, the spine, all the nerves, and, and the brain. But it's just so wild, like to see. Dude, and that's the hu that's a human that you're holding right there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wow. Let me see if I could, I could see if I could find like um, an image of it online or something. But like, yeah, they have, yeah uh, what a coincidence! Looks like the like like bodies. The bodies, yeah. I just remember, you know, Vanessa, the bodies you know, with all yeah. remember Vanessa, Vanessa uh, Puta Pedro, whatever her name is, and from Utah. Um, she's like, you know, takes all the bands in and blah blah. She's a really cool, really cool, like band, like fucking 
give you a place to stay kind of person. But she did. Band mom. Band mom. The mm -hmm. the Germany dude, the guy from Germany that did like the the bodies exhibit that like would extract all the bones and keep all the like nerves in the correct place. She got the job to work with them and then started working with them for a while. I think he might have passed away because he's kind of older. But it's those, the the body. It's like arenas and stuff they would do the I bodies think i remember like... her telling me something about working for bodies casey you were yeah. about to say something yeah, yeah. yeah. I I went to the bodies exhibit in san diego i would ago. love to go see that thing but i have not had the chance to yet it's i cool. think it's always here in new york it's called the like Ev 20%. evelyn tables if you look it up like uh e-v-e-l-y-n and they have like um these old boards of like all like nerves that they extracted but this is from like hundreds of years ago, and they didn't know. Yeah. Like oh Jesus. Anything. Okay. Yeah. Oh Jesus, this looks so crazy. wild, dude. I want to show this. Like, that like insp getting, inspired a lot of the, the earlier just, song material. I'm getting Ray Moore and Flanagan ads from that. So was <laughs> the, the what opening you were track studying oh, college yeah. got you down this path? Uh, no, the, I think I read some book at the time that was like about like early medicine and like what mm -hmm. happens when you donate your body to the science and stuff. And there was like the first track we had is there was like um, there was some doctor that was like known for like uh, stealing corpses and stuff like that to like to experiment on because it and was, then yeah the, yeah the boundaries of things exactly, at the time yeah. yeah. So then, like, uh, one of the things he did was, like, he tried to, like, keep oxygen in somebody's head, like, with a pig. Whoa. It was really wild. Like, so, because um, like they were... At, Goble, yeah, right. at the time, they were trying to, like, figure out, like, how long <laughs> your uh, your brain, like, survives, mm. like... A, like after I mean, the this is the, I mean, they would like study like how many blinks like somebody would have. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, that that that's it's the really thing wild. that I came across with, that tripped me out yeah. as a young one. That the guy who who he yeah he got. That's the story though too. We uh, we've had multiple versions of a story during this podcast. We don't really know, but there was a dude who was a scientist got his head cut off, and he's like, "I'm going to make this an experiment." Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and and, and had a, an apprentice or somebody, you know, study his head after it was cut off his body. Yeah, and and to what did they determine? Like how long you can see? Yeah, like, but he, then but one guy went as far as trying to circulate pig's blood into like somebody's head, like so that was to like, keep it oh, alive yeah. after it was decapitated. Yeah. Whoa. But uh, yeah, that's the the first track abducted for research. It's a, it's about that, like that uh, experiment and everything. Imagine like that. being the guys, that guy, the, the one the with head. the Peter Gabriel film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a, not what, Peter Gabriel. Oh, <laughs> was there <laughs> any? Uh, <laughs> was there Phil any? Collins. Things, Phil Collins. Was there, yeah, okay. What was the results <laughs> of this experiment, dude? What was the results of the pig blood experiment? Probably, probably not good. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, don't, I, I don't know. I don't remember. Oh, we need to know. Dude. Dude. Forever, dude. Yeah. Like he got pig's blood and just was like, he, he, my "It's head Walt forever. Disney, <laughs> dude." <laughs> I mean, but I'm looking at these uh, these uh, Evelyn tables. Yeah, They're pretty ridiculous, dude. Like how they put it in wood or something. Yeah, That's then insane. Mm. Like the same. Look at this one right here. At it's that same idea. museum, they they had this. Uh, <laughs> This other condition that was called fibrodysplasia, that's like, uh, oh, okay, where like bone grows like into all your muscles and stuff and distorts your body and everything. Like was elephant like, man, uh, yes, yeah, kind of, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yes, Nailed that's, it. I think it's exactly what he Joseph wouldn't that be exactly Merrick? what he had, but it would have been probably, I mean, Ro uh, Robert Merrick, no, that, yeah, Mer yeah. John, Something. John Merrick, God, damn, as a kid, I was obsessed with him. Long John yeah. Merrick. Yeah. Long John Merrick. <laughs> they have Long John Silver's has chicken planks. You ever think about that? You want Joseph to be Merrick. I'm sorry, Joseph dude. Want to get deep? Joseph. Oh yeah, John was uh, his name in uh, Lynch's. Maybe it's not. He he switched the front first what? name. I thought. This is a, it's not, it's an, the old drummer of Savala Carnage is not Wolfman, dude. 
I think it, Elephant Man was also um, <laughs> a lot of uh, tumors, too. <laughs> yeah. It's not just bone shit. It was tumors. I said yeah, John no, that was... Merrick, so he said John Merriman. Okay. <laughs> it took me a minute. I didn't... <laughs> Okay, guys, I am at the end here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to go to right. bed. I've been yeah. up yeah, since three hours ahead, dude. doing drum it's eight, stuff. It's 8.55 well, p.m. for us. Oh, my God. Dude, it's I, night yeah. here. I feel like <laughs> we may have not spoken as much about the project as we should have, but I will say that this is something that when I listened to it, it, it gave me nostalgia, gave me... Uh, uh, a feeling of this project is just as relevant as anything right now. I think that that's from a long time. That was that was a that was a comment from seven or like three hours ago, two hours ago. I said there. Who You're me? Looking, what I, I just I, said? I no, no. Uh, my heart was stole this dickhead. And I was I was like I'm gonna put that somewhere random on the what? podcast. <laughs> and then, and right at the end, as I'm this. saying, as I'm being. <laughs> As I mean, I John's, nice face, to... John's face was like just just gave me exactly what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Well, I'm just trying to be nice, dude. And no, I I uh, it, it it hits me in a lot of uh, areas that have been stuck with me since I became a metalhead, dude. And 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 that out of you know the you know the fringe grind and and technicality and mathematics involved in it where where things are actually you know very meticulous that that's where i got from nerectomy dude so i i'm a big fan i'm gonna stay a fan and i'm i'm ho hoping that this thing keeps going dude because once Longstreth was involved too, that's what that's how I became uh you know, got you guys on my radar and not just because of John, just the music itself is really uh actually grabbed me because I listen to these bands every week that we mm -hmm. do these things and and 173 episodes and I can't say that every one of them had, has made an impact on me, but I'm saying that the nostalgia of that early 2000s, mid 2000s. What the fuck is that? <laughs> Joel's just fucking. He, who's trolling me? So one of these guys are trolling me. They're telling me to shut up. They're they're giving me my. Uh, uh, what is it when you when you're giving your thanks oh, speech music. at the Oscars? <laughs> yeah, they're 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 playing speech. me off, dude. That's what it is. They're playing me off. You can change. Oh. Is that cool? I'm, no, I'm to be frozen. I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> this is actually rad. <laughs> this is super rad in the background. Um, I enjoyed it very much, dude. And I'm gonna keep listening. And I want you guys to keep making shit, dude. We're gonna keep dude. making things. Oh man, I'm I feel gonna, like I'm on a football. Why are you right pumping now? me up at the end of this thing? I'm gonna be like running around the shop now. With nobody else in my sandals, dude. I don't know. It's like, you, it's like the nostalgia thing. Yeah, it definitely kind of comes out of the pits of the relapse message board and the Derek Roddy message board and just that era. It's mm -hmm. got a. It's got a. Mm -hmm. It's weird because you know to, to celebrate an early two thousands yeah. form of extreme death metal mm -hmm. when right. everybody yeah. is just trying to be, you know, scream bloody gore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of the the move lately. That's mm -hmm. Scream Bloody Gore and Bolt are in a lot of the bands, but I don't know. Well, we kind of want to try and bring it back to when people first discovered Cryptopsy and Beneath the yeah. Mask, fucking even Origin. Why not? You know that yeah. that so, okay. yeah. whispers and 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 to actually play the stuff. So that's that's the boomer. That's the boomer dig right there. Is we can actually <laughs> all play this material. <laughs> yeah, I can do. I can actually fucking do it. I dude. can actually do <laughs> it. Real bass drums. The boomer dig. Yeah. <laughs> no, I get it. Boomer dig. You, know. oh, I, yeah. you said actually yeah, something that's fear. what's fucked me up actually, and then we'll end probably end it on this. But uh, with uh, you know Nick Shangelis from Cephalic, uh, you know job for he's bass player dude. 
Shredder, dude. Mm -hmm. He uh, was on a podcast recently, and he's fucked this this, and it's actually a Sean Lennon quote, and it fucked me up. But he said, Sean Lennon said, "Is nostalgia some sort of? Uh, is it a form of depression?" And that was ah, like, that's deep. I know. I was like, and I'm still fucked by it. And actually, Sean Lennon came on to his fucking uh, Instagram and replied to him, and like, I was like, "Thank you for sharing this." Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, "What the fuck?" But I, I, when he said that to me, I, I still, it's like one of those sentences that's, that's like fucked me up for like three or four weeks now. Where I'm like, because I'll, I'll, I'll listen to nostalgic stuff now and I'll be like, oh, and I'll think about times. And it's kind of like, it is kind of like a, mm -hmm. it can be, but I feel like it is kind of like a, a weird form of depression. <laughs> Yeah, it, I would say uh, nerectomy uh, can be considered a weird form of depression. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, oh. it, it, so I get it, dude. The, and the depression is is yearning for what once was. That's and also looking through rose-colored glasses at once what it used to be and, oh, yeah. and, and looking at, like, I don't know. There's so many things. The fastest my brain just, like, took on with this. I'm like, oh, that's a good quote. Then all of a sudden, my brain was like late at night going like, oh, fuck. Yeah, that's not something is... that you want to be stuck with when you can't get to bed at night. <laughs> yeah, and I'm an overthinker, actually, too. I'm like, actually, I'm no, I want to be stuck with it, dude. I want it to be stuck to me until the end, dude. I want to be like, you know what, dude? On my, on my deathbed, I'm going to be like, mud vein LD50, dude. You got to... <laughs> You know, that's how I'm going to be, dude. It's one of John's favorite albums. I know that for sure. <laughs> I know the owner of Federa Bases, and he talks about that bass player quite often. It's pretty entertaining. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're all the end. <laughs> the end. <laughs> yeah. No, uh... we, we want to be stuck with it, dude. That's the whole thing is that's why it's it's depressing because it's still stuck to us. But is it depressing? Uh, I, go, I go back. No, to, that's what it's, depressing in the sense, ah. it's depressing when you when you <laughs> oh, yeah, think... we're going to keep John up. That's actually, this is a trick. To keep John up. He's like, I'm, he's all, I'm, I'm getting tired, dude. I'm like, let me Digging, just drop a bomb. No, on but you like, dig, John, what you... is sleep, dude? Like, really? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. What is right. what? We all do it and we don't know the what sleep, happens. Dude. <laughs> Where oh. do you go? <laughs> like, why do you want to go unconscious right now? Does the government like, want you to stay conscious sleep? with us as long as you can? I want to go unconscious so I can get up tomorrow and I can make more blast beats for you. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right, is, dude. All right, let's let John. Right. Some... He, that, he wins. All right. Let's put everybody. Let's go, yeah. all go to sleep. Yeah. But everybody. The thing is, is, the next time I jam with Joe, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna have two origin tours under my belt so <laughs> i'll nice. be ready you're, you're gonna be ready dude we you really gotta get this great. we really gotta get this band out uh live that's what i would that's what Fuck i think yeah. the next step is, is because yeah. the, the this kind of music it is it's a statement and like when i first met my girlfriend i would tell her about this project that i'm working on with these two weirdos and if i keep playing this material <laughs> i'll be the best drummer in the world yeah, and I got all I got to do is just learn these songs and just run these songs like three times a week, and my chops will never suffer. Wow! And it's, I mean, it definitely having learned that working on that material, it, yeah, it's it's definitely keeps you in shape. It's an aerobic exercise, and it's, but now I'm gonna come back from two origin tours and plug into the Nerectomy material. Uh. I hope so. Dude, Joe, I would feel good if, nice. if a man like I know, this. I know, you have John Longhouse right. saying that about your fucking band. That's insane. That's pretty insane. I know. Yeah, I'm we're, talking about, we're talking about Colored Sands. We're talking just, about fucking all the origin records. We're talking I was just about. thinking about what it's yeah. like. I, I've never like jammed with a drummer who was like crazy. Like I mean, I just want to just like to like plug in your guitar and just be like. Oh, yeah. Pff, and yeah. Just, yeah. It's wow. exciting, man. Like, sure. Yeah. yeah. Like the best, one of the best drummers. Like, out you just like. <laughs> it's just, Auditory like, Viagra. It must just be like, yeah, just like so sick to jam. <laughs> Auditory yeah. Viagra. Not like dude. sharp and on their shit. Like it's really cool. It's really yeah. Cool. Whoa, dude. Yeah. That's wow. a new concept. I mean, now think about all this weekend. Auditory Viagra. All right, guys. 
<laughs> this is badass. No wonder Joe, why I'm so happy all the time. Joe, I'd like to have you back uh, just on your own, dude. Yeah. And get into you a little bit. It, it, and I'm not saying that I wouldn't want John on here, too. I'm just saying. Well, I know. sit here and interrupt with stupid stories. I'm not the <laughs> John. No, we, also, we, like, you did, John, we you're all really funny. were. You're like covered. a funny dude. You need to like do your own. Like, if and you don't need to do a podcast. I mean, it's embarrassing to do podcasts now. But like. Like you, you have actually like a stand up comedic kind of cool thing. Like, a you guys know it's just gonna do comedy. Where That's, you guys are all into comedy, or, or... I, I'm more into comedy than I am music right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've been like super into comedy lately, uh, with all the podcasts. Yeah. I got like, I'm obsessed with totally... Shane Gillis. And all Shane, well, things like yeah. That. I like Shane Gillis. I guess at three yeah. hours, we shouldn't have brought this up because we can go for another three hours. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But no, no, We're, no. John's always been naturally funny. David but tells like, new specials amazing. Way, yeah. No, but in an, yeah, very David unique Bell, way. dude. Fuck yeah, shout out. You used yeah. to not like me, Joe. I used uh, to think I was a dick. <laughs> you did I tell you that? Dude, yeah. At, uh, <laughs> at that three was... hours, we're learning this as well. No, but no, but I, I, mean, I, did. <laughs> I didn't understand your fucking weird, your weird fucking angle on fucking on humor. I and mean, I probably like, I didn't know how to land it at that point in time either. either. <laughs> and oh, Joel fuck. had a little bit of more <laughs> of an ego at the time as well. I wouldn't call I it an ego. ego. No, he... no, no, none of us had egos. We were all just that fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> all right well no, I, I, you uh, cracked me the fuck up i uh, multiple yeah. crack ups where i was like holy fuck i mean we're the point to the point where i was like i w wish i could hear this guy talk more while i'm working and talking about things like i, I was listening to a john longstreth episode you're like funny though it's like I, like it's not episode, like bullshit uh, funny. it's like it's podcast. like it made me actually laugh uh, like, dude, yeah. uh, we should like, do one <laughs> We should do one when, like, the Malefic Throne album comes out, or when the Crocmite cool. Knacker comes yeah. out, or something like that. Yeah. Super down, super down, hundred percent. I I love hanging with all you dudes, and I want you guys to come back on our show as many times as until we fucking die, dude. That's literally what it is. <laughs> how long ago was I on? How long ago was I on this show? Uh, just uh, maybe uh, a year. Let's see, was it over a year? Uh, had I had my surgery? I'm guessing a year. You didn't have it I yet. I, think. I, I just surgery. listened to that podcast like recently, and uh, you didn't get it yet. I think I'm gonna you try and like, do it. I'm gonna try and pull it up. Long. I think my mountain internet's on a big delay. Sorry, guys. I know, I'm trying to look it up too. My shit's all delayed. Just... I'm doing it as fast as I can, John. Oh, uh, Anthony. Do you uh, want to I, I'm sorry. I, I put in Long John Strath. I should have fucking. No. See, these are boomer jokes. He's got boomer jokes. <laughs> <laughs> This episode 115. One year ago, it says, dude. I wow. think I fucking nailed it, dude. All right, so let's give it another year. Cool. In the, yeah. intro, in the intro, you're talking about drinking wine. Yeah. <laughs> I just heard you talking about drinking it's wine. February 3rd. Uh, last year. Hold up random thermos and just say what it if is. I, okay, <laughs> what's the exact... How can I pull up the yes, exact late. date? Why, did, why doesn't it tell me <laughs> the exact date? Video, bro. Well, oh, February 3rd of 2023. So we probably did it the second or something. February 3rd, 2023. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, dude. All right, boys. Love you well, guys. Yeah. Uh, we've Thank dragged this out. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Until like Dude, minutes. Joe, you're rad, dude. John, Thanks, you're dude. rad as fuck. Everybody's guys rad. Are rad. Thank you so I much. I love doing this every week and having you guys on as a big plus. Uh, um, fuck yeah. Um, right. All the plugs, Battleforge Coffee, Cali Death Podcast, uh, General Re Raider Rehearsal Studios, Joel's face in the old place. Um, and most importantly, Nerectomy. Yeah, but, go to... Yeah, yes. Go to nerectomyband.com. That's where you can get all our merch. Nerectomyband.com. Oh, yeah. We got CDs. One hundred percent band funded. What was that again? Directory. What? Nerectomyband.com. Uh, yeah. Gotcha. Exactly. Dude, yeah. If we didn't do it in the beginning, I'm going to be pissed. I don't think we did that. <laughs> no, we yeah, didn't do it in the beginning. That's we right. did manscaped. Oh, dude. Okay, let's give them a little extra like boost somewhere right, with I'm that. We didn't say in the beginning. I'll put it in the clip somehow. We're sure. assholes, dude. Oh, no problem. <laughs> Fuck Pallet House podcast, dude. Yeah, Peter Steele, you know, like, <laughs> that, um, the story about <laughs> that. Peter Steele. Pallet House podcast. Big Cartel. Yeah, com. You can get it. T shirts. So it's near. I'm gonna do it right now. Near. I actually need a Cali Death podcast T shirt. Yeah, nerectomy. Yeah, N e u r e c t o m y. Uh huh. 
band.com like like this is this for the uh auditorially deficient people okay yeah that looks right n-e-u-r-e-c-t-o-m-y-b-a-n-d.com what up dude drinking and smoking all night i did that <laughs> first fucking shot well it was moving on the screen you nailed it yeah so well, i just forget. fucking did it as it was going by dude my brain <laughs> still worked <laughs> You're on that sharp. Right. I got a gift. All right. Thanks. Thank you guys for coming on, dude. You guys are fucking awesome. We love you guys. Yeah. Check out your record to me. Thank you guys. Right, guys. Rad people, nice guys. Man. All right. You guys have a great weekend. Everybody who is in the chat, whoever listens to this, have a great rest of your life. Um, we will be <laughs> here next goodbye. week. <laughs> yeah, <this is> <laughs> Anthony, are you okay? I'm fine, dude. I just fucking read that.